All right, guys, BLM here, back, another live stream. Apologize for the super late start. Uh, had a lot of stuff to catch up on before I started stream. Like, fuck me, dude, there's way too much shit going on right now. Um, but, yeah, I was going to play AC2, Ozuya Survivor. We have uh, Titans vs. Rebels stuff, which I've been working on. Uh, we have BB Can, uh, which I just finished watching the episode. So, yeah, there's a lot going on. <laughs> um, there we go, changed the category finally. Um, what a boring episode? I, yeah, it wasn't great. <laughs> it, it was fine. It wasn't terrible. Like, it was fine. But, uh, yeah, it, it wasn't great, though. Um, yeah, that was something. Uh, thank you, Sorquil, for, uh, 32 month race up. Hope Venus makes merge. I just don't know what to think of Venus is, is the thing. I mean, I think, okay, this is why, so this is why I think of this episode. Did it need to be two hours? No, <laughs> it didn't, obviously. I think that's like very clear just by looking at the result. It didn't need to be two hours. I don't mind it though. I mean, like, again, like, I think it allowed us to get to know the cast pretty well. I think at this point, despite the fact that it's been the same tribe going to tribal both times, I feel like we know pretty much the entire cast pretty well i think probably like gem is probably the exception i'm trying to think of like is there anybody else um but like at least there's that like i think as like a setup to the season i i think it's fine obviously as an individual episode on its own yeah it's it's not great <laughs> because it's like um uh, again the jess vote off was pretty underwhelming there was a lot of craziness leading up to it though uh, I, I will say, I did feel like the Kenzie stuff was, like, so blatantly a red herring, though. To where, for me, it was always, like, Banu or Jess. And, like, we didn't really get any proper setup to Banu. Um, going out until, like, he went crazy at Tribal. To where it's, like, even then, we didn't get any, like, whispers going on about voting out Banu. So I was like, okay, it's probably Jess. But, like, I was surprised it was Jess, though, coming into the episode. Where I talked about this last week, that I'm like... I thought they made it so obvious it could have been Jess that I was like, well, then it's probably not Jess. Like, why would they, like, make it, like, that obvious in the preview if it's her? But I, I guess it actually was her, so whatever. Um, but, yeah, like, I mean, still, like, the, the way that it happened, though, I, I thought was still fun with, like, Banu going crazy at Tribal and everything. Um... Yeah, Maria, okay, so this is where I'm at edgically. Maria's number one by a lot. Um, I, I obviously, like, I think at the end of the day, this is a weird edit. I don't feel like anyone's had a, like, fully spotless edit. Um, but I do think Maria is far and away number one for me at this point. Um, and I think the big reason for that is the connection to Denise. Um, for me, that's, like, the thing that's, like, really, really standing out is the, um is the confessional about how well them talking about how they're like denise and malcolm and we literally get a flashback to denise and malcolm and we get her explicitly saying that i feel like i'm like denise um which again obviously like i've criticized denise's winning game but like again denise is a winner and like they literally did this last season of connecting d to amber um so i'm like i feel like that's pretty good i will say it's episode two though that's very early um where that's a bit of a worry but um still I, I feel like maria's by like by far number one like after that i i mean like it's kind of all over the place um like i thought this was a bad episode for hunter hunter was my number one um but things like i think the difference though is that venus is being connected to poverty in a negative way where like with with Maria, it's like it's being shown as like a positive thing. With Venus, it's being shown as like this is like a threat or whatever. Um, now I will say Venus is still pretty high. She's not like I don't know. I think it's like it's it's very conflicting messages because the thing is like I feel like edit wise we're supposed to be sympathizing with Venus, yet none of her tribe is sympathizing with her, um, and we're getting this like negative content from people talking about her which is like like we're getting negative sp uh spv which is like like that's kind of like sending mixed signals to me uh i yeah i i think purple is not looking good i think the only person that has a shot is tiffany and even then it's not 
looking great. Um, yeah, I think Kenzie's out. I, I thought this was a bad episode for Kenzie. I think Q, I think it wasn't a terrible episode if Q got his way. Um, though we're explicitly being shown, like, Q saying it's, like, up to Tiffany and everything, and, like, him wanting Kenzie out, and then he doesn't get Kenzie out. I think that's bad. Um, Banu is Banu. Um, and, and, yeah, that's pretty much it. Tiffany, like, again, like, I... I thought her episode one is very situational. I think the fact that she got so much content in episode two is better. Um, because this obviously wasn't necessary, but it's still, like, not good enough. Like, I, I think, I, in general, I feel like that tribe is being set up to fail. Um, like, I, I don't think any of them are particularly, uh, like, are, like, contenders, essentially. Um, like, Charlie, Charlie's interesting. I have Charlie number two right now. And the main reason is because of his connection to Maria, because of how highlighted that was, and also the fact that he's getting all this, like, other weird content. Now, if you were to actually genuinely ask me, do I think Charlie's actually the number two most likely to win? I would say no. But I do feel like his connection to Maria and, like, again, just how much he's in the edit, despite the fact that he's, like, not the most interesting person in the world, um, is something to, to call out there. Um... And, then it, like, because, and also, it's like, after Maria, I just feel like everyone has, like, these pretty glaring holes. So, again, I think Hunter, this was a bad episode for him. He uh, goes on the idol hunt, explicitly says that I'm going to find the idol, and then doesn't find the idol. Um, we we have Tevin, who is getting, again, kind of mixed signals uh, with his edit. Uh, to where, again, he's being shown, like, running the tribe. But I feel like... Again, he's not being shown, like, particularly positive, positively in doing so. Uh, I'll thank you, Melanie, for uh, one bit. But, um, yeah, there's that. Who else is there? Soda, I think, is out. I think this is just, like, uh, too far. She's not out, out, but it's not looking good. <laughs> like, I, I think the fact that she, uh, where am I going right now? I'm going to Tuscany, okay. Um, but, yeah, the fact that she, like, we literally got this, like, montage of, um, of her uh, taking the idol from Venus and everything. Like, yeah, that didn't need to be there. So, like, yeah, that that's definitely really bad for Soda. Um, Randon, I, I think this is just content that needed to be there. I don't think it really changes much. We'll have to see how it goes next episode for me on Randon. But I'm, I'm still not, like, particularly high on Randon. Uh, and then, is everyone on Orange? I think it is, right? So then, uh, then Siga. Um... So yeah, gem just wasn't there. Like all there was was the jungle gem moment. Um, yeah, I'm, there's not really much to say about gem. Like I, I thought she had a decent premiere. Uh, just nothing really there in episode two. It's not damning, but it's also nothing to prop her up either. It's just she's there. Um, then Mariah, um, similar thing. Like Mariah had more of an edit in episode one. Um, but I feel like her edit was a lot less like purposeful it felt like it just felt like it was there because she was emotional or whatever um and then yeah like this episode she was just like there she had like one confessional um yeah she's just yeah she she's there uh and then tim is interesting because like i thought he like, yeah i i thought tim was going coming into this episode i thought tim was like set for the boot um but he didn't get uh he, he didn't go out so i'm like okay may, maybe he has a chance still not perfectly high on him but um He's Again, he maybe has a chance. <laughs> um, and then Ben is there. Got good content. Got uh, personal content. We still know nothing about his relationships outside of he's with the men. Um, yeah, I mean, he, I don't think he's winning, but uh, I would not be shocked if he has longevity. So, I think that's literally everybody. Um, yeah, Rand, I think it is an interesting move, Randon working with, uh, with Venus. I mean, he's going to need somebody. Um... So I think working with the person that's on the bottom, especially at a point where you know you have an advantage as well, and you know that the others are not that solidified. Oh, I forgot about Liz. Liz is not winning. Liz is the bottom of my power ranking. Uh, I think 0% chance Liz is winning this game. Um, but yeah. Ben and Jake edit? Not really. Uh, what, what is their Jake like? I, I just think Ben's like kind of just like a kooky character. Um, yeah, Liz's only content was essentially her bragging. 
Uh, and her also... By the way, that was also weird, too. Like, us seeing her and Mariah talk during the immunity challenge. Uh, which, I like, I get that's supposed to be, like, a funny moment of, like, oh, okay, this is some levity in the middle of this, like, super intense challenge. But, like, um, I thought more would come from that, though. Um, like, she's not kitty rich, thank God. Uh, but, yeah, Australian Survivors was insane. I mean, uh, I think he crushed for giving a sub to Nigel. Um, but, yeah, like, Australian Survivor is, like... Like, is this the best season? Um, I, I think this is debatably the best season of Australian. Oh, actually, dude, I think at this point, as long as it like lands pretty well, I think this is the best season of Australian Survivor. I, I, I think it just clearly is. Um, I think it's interesting when comparing it to US because like, like this is very good. Like this is a genuinely great season. Where like I'm, like again, I'm I'm working on the review. I'm up to episode fifteen right now. Um. And, like, there's just so much in this season. Um, oh, there we go. Crush uh, sub for himself there. Uh, so, yeah, thank you for that. Um, but, yeah, th this is, like, g genuinely great season in Australian Survivor. And then, I guess, should we talk about BB Can? Which, like, I mean, <laughs> it's whatever. <laughs> I mean, uh, excited to see Anthony back. Anthony's probably winning this season at this point. Um... Outside of that, I mean, uh, I don't know, it's just kind of typical BB can. Uh, uh, two subs in a bit is crazy. I think three, right? Yeah, because Sork will subbed as well. Um, but yeah, Donna's mothering, <laughs> as you I guess. I mean, uh, yeah, by the way, also, I've not watched any of the Jiro dailies. I've like seen updates online on them, but I haven't watched any of them for myself where like i don't have the greatest uh knowledge of like what's actually going on but what i did see is that like donna seems to be like she's in the girl group obviously but she's not like very trusted within that group i mean elijah is just there like a lie like straight up like again, i thought elijah would be like called out as like a kevin jacobs it seems like that's not the case it seems like they're actually genuinely looking at him as this like naive sort of guy um so again good on him for that i mean outside of that like we don't know anything about his relationships in the game I, I literally don't know anything about where he is in the game at all. But, um... But yeah, in terms of, uh... Like, him being an initial target and everything, obviously he's doing better than that. Uh, yeah, Janine, I think, is, like... It's... Like, I, I thought Janine would do well this season because I thought this all-women's group would come together, and that obviously did happen. Um, I think the worry for Janine, though, is the fact that, yeah, she's being a bit too open with her game. Um where she is a target for this week. Um, oh, is he the one that's Goose? I, remember, I did see it, like, they were calling someone Goose, but I didn't know who they were calling Goose. Um, Jelinski shouldn't have even been first boot. This is about the... the Jelinski Jess debate, because Stripe, I don't know uh, on where I land on who's higher, because I think Jess... Like, does nothing good outside of just surviving around more than Jelinski. <laughs> or, like, I feel like Jelinski, I can at least, like, point out things that are good, but he's also so bad, though, <laughs> at other things. Um, so, I, I think it's tough. Like, I, like, my gut says Jelinski higher, but I'm not sure. Um, am I sad not seeing Anthony on feeds? I mean, yeah, obviously. Um, but just seeing Anthony back, though, is insane to me. I, I actually did get a little bit worried before the episode aired. Um, where... Oh, fuck, I had to start from the beginning. Um, or not before the episode, when the, like, when the pr uh, preview started or whatever. When we got the, uh, like, shot of the two returnees that, like, look nothing like Victoria and Anthony. <laughs> and obviously, like, now we know it's, like, obviously, like, it was a decoy thing. Um, but still, it's, like, uh, I did get worried that, like, oh, no, what if it's, like, what if it's fucking Marty and someone else random? Um, but thankfully it was Anthony and Victoria, which I thought were perfect picks here. I mean, like, again, like, I, I, Anthony, like, still, he's too good for this cast. Um, and I think we're seeing that now. <laughs> um... Where, like, I would not be shocked if Anthony just completely steamrolls this season. Like, I think that's kind of the trajectory we're, we're heading in. Um, but, 
I mean, at, at least we get a new best BB can player, potentially. Like, that'll be something. Um, thoughts on the Raymond? So, yeah, the Raymond stuff was weird, obviously. I mean, uh, I did see, like, Owen's post about it and, like, Owen being, like, super insulted by it. Like, I I get it. I get that point of view. Um, and I, I, I do find it, like, yeah, it, it is kind of icky. The fact that, like, they're mobilizing a quit. Um in a situation where they saw someone genuinely quit due to mental health issues. Um, and they're, like, weaponizing that for their own gameplay. Um, I do find that, like, not great. Um, but also, like, I, I feel like what other way would they have gotten this twist to work? Which, to be fair, they didn't need the twist, is also the thing. Um, like, if they really wanted to, they could have just genuinely voted out Valeria. Um... Like, they had things at their disposal to vote out Valeria anyway. Um, but, I, I, I think, like, if they're going to pull off this move, I think that's probably the only way you get it to happen. Because, like, how else are you going to fucking get people to vote off Raymond? Um, in a unanimous vote, also. <laughs> uh, I think Mark is winning nearly for sure for me at this point which i find weird the fact that it doesn't feel like most people are on board with that um we're like if you look on the the survivor edgic almost everybody has has ferris or kirby number one um okay fuck me which is weird to me because it feels like that's like not taking consideration how australian survivor typically edits um I don't see Ferris as losing finalists. I think if Ferris gets to the end, I think he wins. I still think he's getting there. Um, like, I, I think Mark is like pretty clearly winning. Oh, thank you, uh, more Panda, for a thousand bits. Um, trying to be his last turn I wanted to, but Twitch said no bits for some reason. Interesting. Don't know why that's the case. But yeah, thank you. Um, but. Yeah, like, I think it, Ferris and Kirby, I just think, are not getting there. I think is the is the big thing. Um, and, like, I, Mark just has a pretty standard Australian Survivor winner at this point. Now, to be fair, obviously, we came from last season. Um, where Liz had a much more abnormal winner edit uh, until, like, the end. Like, her end, like, her edit, like, in the last, like, third of the season was pretty standard. But everything up to that point was a bit stranger um but like i feel like marks is just pretty standard all around like consistent presence on the season not the main character not this like big over-the-top presence again obviously the exception is david david is the exception but that was all stars um where and also it's fucking david as also <laughs> is the thing um but and like I, I, to be fair you can make the same argument about about ferris and kirby um but I, I just feel like that would be more abnormal for the Ferris or the Kirby's of the world to win this season. Um, when they're just so out in front in the edit. Um, where, and I, I think the thing to also note is that with David, I think the difference there is that David was the only person that got that massive of an edit on that season. Like when it comes to all stars, like David is number one confessional wise by almost double. The next We've person. Found, Steph, um, every other time, the um, every other season, like the person with the top confessional count never wins. Um, and like those are situations where the, the final count is a lot closer. Like when we have like George and Haley. Um, like George is obviously top confessional getter. Haley is second. Haley wins, not George. Um, and I feel like like I would have more faith in Kirby than Ferris personally. I also don't think. Kirby wins, though, due to the fact that she was invisible for the first two episodes. Um, to where, at that point, that leaves me with Mark. Um, so, yeah. I, I personally think it's Mark. I don't think any... Like, I think everyone else has massive glaring issues. Um, to where, like, Mark's number one for me by a lot at this point, especially now that Valeria is gone. Um, and to be fair, Mark is not in a good position game-wise. Like, if we're looking at this game logic-wise, I think... I would have probably Kirby or, or Ferris as my number one. Um, because like Mark's like pretty much on the bottom at this point. Like he's not, he doesn't really have many options. 
Uh, like, Trip, I don't know how Mark gets there. Like, I don't know who Mark gets to the end with. Um, but I do feel like it is Mark. Um, because obviously Liz or Shawnee were winning, and once Liz left, or once Shawnee left, Liz, yeah, yeah, I think that's, that was my vibe by the time Shawnee left, is that I think that's what they're doing with Liz, is giving, like, like, the benefits of the Shawnee edit to Liz. Um, by, uh, and like, uh, I think by the time the merge, I think my one, two, and three were George, Shawnee, and Liz. Um, but again, I was always higher on Shawnee than George because of the main character thing. Um, but then once Shawnee left, I was like, okay, I think Liz is probably it. Um. Mark Caroline finds it. That would be funny. That would be great, actually. And I think it would make sense edit wise, like where Caroline definitely feels like she has the like set up to a losing finalist. Um, and I was, again, it would just be a glorious storyline if that were to happen. I think that would be really funny. Alex could also be a losing finalist. Oh, by the way, also we do pretty much have confirmation of a final two. Um, through uh, I think it was Valeria's exit press, right? Um, I think it was Valeria's exit press that she like leaked that was a final two. Um, which I'm good with. Uh, I personally rather have a final two anyway. And also that means probably no more non-limbs. Uh, because I believe we counted it that if it was a final three, we only need one more non-limb. Uh, which essentially means that we only, like, that we don't need any anymore. Um, which would be great. So, um, I hope that's the case. I hope it is a final two. A Guatemala China quiz. We'll do it later. I'll open it. Um... Uh, I forgot who is number one on oh, Australian Survivor. In terms of the boots, I have Valeria two of the boots. I still have Eden one. Uh, we're talking about in the like uh, who's winning in the game against Mark. So I had Mark number one for the last like five episodes, even before Valeria left. Straight up, I I'm kind of surprised at how surprised people were at Valeria left. <laughs> We're like, straight up, I didn't think Valeria was leaving here. Like, uh, but, like, I wasn't at this point where, like, Valeria is the only person that can win, which it seemed like a lot of people were on that bandwagon. Um, I agree. Valeria has, did not play particularly well. Uh, the reason why she's as high as she is, because, again, I, I do think it's, like, a twist that they could never have predicted. Though, I will also say it could have just been an idol. <laughs> Um, to where I th I still think you should put a split vote just in case. Um, to where I think it is kind of insane that no one did like do a split vote. But also, I love that, like no one talked about Kirby uh, giving up her immunity necklace. Uh, that's insane, isn't it? Like I feel like to me that's insane. Yeah, it feels like no one's talking about that online, and also there's no one is talking about that on the show either. Or like it just happened. And they were just like, okay, yeah, whatever. Um. Like, to me, that's kind of insane. Uh, Why'd you try to give it up secretly? Yeah, I mean, it is weird, right? And too far, I'm, I wonder if it's because, like, Kirby doesn't know the show and she doesn't know the rules. Um, But, like, obviously it's going to get revealed anyway. They can't get to the vote without it being confirmed who has immunity. <laughs> uh, so it's like, it would be, like, like, if you're trying to make people, like, if you're trying to give up the necklace without people knowing and, like, have, like, like, I wonder if she thinks that, like, oh, this means that if they vote for Rihanna, it would be, like, an idol sort of thing. Um, but, like, I, I assume it comes down to Kirby just not knowing the show well. Um, oh, yeah, like, after... Yeah, like, I, I'm Maria number one. Uh, by a lot. Even though, again, like, I'm not super confident really on anybody, but I think if I, like... I think Maria is the number one, especially with the connections to Denise. Um... Then after that, it's like I have Charlie too. I don't know if I feel, actually feel that confident in him winning, but I just feel like like his connection with Maria is obviously meant to be something that's important. Um, then I have Hunter three, even though I think his edit's still flawed. Fuck, uh, Tevin four, despite I also think his edit is flawed. I haven't really at that point, just everyone's edit is flawed. Uh, I have Venus five, Tiffany six, and it's like whatever after that. Uh, I think Gem seven, uh, Mariah eight. Then, is it Kenzie 9? Or is it Soda? I think it's Soda 9, Kenzie 10. 
Q11. And who's after that? Uh, Randon 12. I think. No, no, wait, no, no. I'm missing people. I'm missing Ben. Ben's higher. Um, Ben's at like seven. Oh, fuck it. I'll open up the fucking thing. Um, where is it? Okay, yeah. Maria 1, Charlie 2, Hunter 3, Tevin 4, uh, Venus 5, Tiffany 6, um, 7 is Jem. Yeah, Jem, then Mariah. I was right on that. 9 is Ben. Yeah, so I did miss Ben. Oh, I have Tim at 10. Tim at 10. Kenzie at 11. Q at 12. Soda at 13. Okay, I had Soda lower than I thought. Rain at 14, which... Maybe those should swap. I'm not sure. Um... Then Banu, 15. Liz, 16. That That's the current power ranking. Yeah, Gem is several. Uh, the position everyone wants to be in. Uh, is that a thing? There was a... That's weird. Where was it at? Because I don't even know how that would even happen. That there's a part that would be two times speed in the review. Um, but, whatever, I guess. <laughs> it's like, when I, it's out at this point. It's like, whatever. I'm not gonna go fix it, probably, but. Um, but, yeah, I don't even know how that even happens. Um, did I take my nap today? No. Um, but, yeah, I'm obviously playing Rebirth. Um, uh, straight up, at this point, I think I hate it. <laughs> I think I hate Rebirth. Um, I don't think it's a good game. Which is funny, because like, I feel like that's like the complete opposite opinion of most people. Um, where like, obviously it's getting like this like massive uh, critical acclaim and everything. Um, like, Rebirth just kind of sucks. Like, it just feels like this massive bloat of a game. For like, no fucking reason. <laughs> um... Like, just, like, everything takes so fucking long in that game. It's like, fuck me, dude. Um, like, why... Okay, I'm not... Well, I guess I'll be kind of spoilers. But, like, still, it's like, it's just every little thing you do. Like, it's like, it could be just done super simply. And no, you have to do fucking three things before you do this other thing. Um, it's like, why? Why do I have to do this? Um, again, like, minor... Again, minor spoiler. Um, like, I, I got, like, super pissed off at, like, the section where, um... There's a section where you have the, like feed a chocobo and like you have to um but then like they force you to do essentially side activities to feed the chocobo um to find like three things to feed the chocobo you have to like go and like play three you have to win three rounds of a uh, queen's blood to get like one thing to feed the chocobo then you go there feed it and say oh no you need another thing um and you have to go through a dungeon to get another one. Then you go back and you have to do it. Like, I forgot what the other thing was. But then you have to do three things to do it. It's like, why? Why is this in the game? Like, this doesn't benefit anything. This is wasting time. Um, and it's like fucking, like, Mithril Mines. The fucking section with Barrett was a fucking pain. Um, and, like, with the fucking, like, pushing the cart and everything. Why the fuck is that so slow? It's like, fuck this game. Um, like, I'm still interested in seeing what's actually happening, uh, because I am, like, interested in, like, the direction they're taking, even though I think it's bad, straight up, but I'm interested in what they're doing, but, like, the actual game is such shit, dude, I fucking hate it, <laughs> like, uh, it's, like, whatever, um, but yeah, Dear No Do Island, um, I, I have no real, like, it was whatever, it was, yeah, it existed, um, it, it's such a mid-show, it is really, uh, where I'm at with that, uh, reviews for Rebirth, like, the game's too long, story's a mess, gameplay's flawed, characters are poorly written, 9.5 out of 10. Yeah, like, I feel like it's a game that's only getting praised because it's Final Fantasy VII. Um, and, like, again, I think there are things to appreciate in terms of the scale of the game. The problem is I think the scale harms, like, every other aspect of the game. Um, where, again, the story is bloated, the gameplay's just annoying, um, there's just too much shit in the game, just in general. Um, reminds me of OG Final Fantasy. Yeah, but on steroids, though. That's the issue. It's like the original Final Fantasy VII, but then, like, making it, like, ten times longer. Um, and, like, the thing is also, it's like, it, like, I mean, like, I, I guess, like, in the in the OG, it does force you to do, like, certain minigames, right? 
But like in this, it like it forces you to do like everything. Like I don't know, it, it's like it's a fucking pain uh, to play. Uh, oh yeah, by the way, yeah, Will Neff has started watching Heroes of Villains, which I'm actually kind of annoyed by, um, because I'm I just have too much shit to watch right now. Um, because I'm I'm trying to watch Will Neff's Heroes of Villains watch through. Um, which, by the way, he skipped Lovers of Water, which I find super funny. They just gave up on the season. Um, I, uh, I'm watching Laced Up Lauren's 41, uh, re like, watch through, which, again, rewatch for me. Um, which I think is interesting. I, I think it's interesting to watch 41 now with the context of the rest of the new era. Um, and I do have, like, modified opinions on it, I think. Uh, I'm still pretty high on it. Like, so I've watched through the pre-merge. Uh, I believe she's watching some right now. But, like, I've watched through the Genie boot. And I still think it's, like, I still think it's an under season. I think it's still fucked by its editing. Its editing is atrocious. Like, looking back on it. Like, obviously, like, it's commonly talked about. But, like, I think I kind of forgot just how bad it is. And it is really bad. Um... But I still find the season fun. I love Brad. Brad is such a great character. Um, so it's like, I think Brad, like, probably should have been higher on my uh, pre-merge character list. Um, why I prefer Titans vs. Rebels over Heroes vs. Villains? I think it's just a more consistent season. All around. Like, through, I think there are less, like, not interesting rounds of gameplay. Um, I also feel like the cast is fantastic. Where, like, obviously there's, like, a couple, like, duds here and there. Like, there's with any Alstrian Survivor cast. But I feel like Heroes of Villains, again, through rewatching Heroes of Villains right now with Will Neff, there's so many fucking duds on that cast. So it's, like, obviously the people that are great are really great, but it's just not a well-rounded season at all. Um, to where, yeah, like, I, I, I think this season's just all around better. Um, Jess better than Brad? I disagree. Jess is fun. Like, I mean, Jess was an interesting uh, early boot here, but, like, uh, not anywhere close to Brad. Um, Janine was talking about bringing Anthony to Final 5. Yeah, I think I saw that. Was that her? I thought that was Bailey that I saw that with. Maybe it was Janine. But, yeah, again, like, uh, just Anthony's one. <laughs> I don't know if Charles was a dud. Um, because, like, Charles had, like, a glorious like downfall a that I thought was fun to see. Like, I think the only, like, Actually, I don't know. Who's, like, a true dud? I don't even know if anyone is a, like, true dud on this season. Even Tobias. Like, Tobias sucks. I hate Tobias. But, again, he had a fun downfall. Um, to, like, and also, like, his, like, weird shit of, like, like doing the L sign uh, when the... When the... Fuck, what tribe is that? When the uh, <laughs> Titans lose and everything. It's like, there's all these things to call out there. Nathan was not a dud. Like, Nathan was a fantastic character. Like, Nathan was an incredible villain. Like, yeah, I expect to see Nathan back. Um, like, I think the biggest dud is Tobias. Like, I think Tobias is the biggest dud. But at least, like, even with Tobias, though, I feel like there's, like, something to mention. I found Winna funny. And Winna had some fun character moments. Again, him trying to, like, get the votes on him at the Upset 10 tribal is really funny. Um... Also, him, like, biting into a banana was funny. Yeah, there's stuff to call out. Re uh, Rihanna is probably, yeah, Rihanna and Kitty. Um, but even then, I feel like Kitty has, like, kind of brought it recently. Through while she's not the most riveting TV in the world, I still think she's, like, bringing something to the table. I think Rihanna is not really bringing anything outside of just how aloof she is at points. Um, yeah, she'll be done when she makes eight figures. Uh, I hope it's not a quit or medevac. Because that would mean we get a non limb then. <laughs> um, made a golden saucer. Golden saucer. Yeah. Um, I am at. Uh, I just finished Corral. So, like, I just started. Actually, no, I don't even think I've started Chapter Nine. Um, so I, I'm essentially on the same chapter as you then. Um, but we're just at different points in the chapter. Um. But yeah, simply, I've not been playing that much recently. Um, like, where... I think I only played, like, an hour or so the last two nights. And I played, like, a decent chunk today. Um, but... 
yeah, I've not been able to play as much because I've been really trying to get worked on this Australian Survivor review because it's taking fucking forever. Um, to where I want to get caught up on it by the end of the week. By the way, what am I doing? The fucking guy's up there. Why, why am I even going around all this? Um... Yeah, it's funny how much, like, Rihanna has also, like, messed up the plan. Where it's, it's, I believe it's three times now, right? That her vote messed up a plan. Um, so that's also humorous. That was the first five minutes of Amazing Race 36. I did not watch it. Uh, I did see it, like, uh, there was the preview, right? On, in the commercials of 46. I didn't watch it either, because I just don't give a shit, straight up. Um, I, I'm still debating over what I'm going to do next week. Because again, it's going to be weird because Amazing Race and BB Can are on at the same time. So, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. If I wasn't doing a review on one of them, I would just watch them both at the same time, just whatever. But I am doing a review on both of them. So, it's like I need to take notes for both of them. So, that's going to be hard to do at the same time. Um, so, yeah, I'm a bit... I think I might watch Amazing Race just because obviously like BB Can... Like, we know what's going to happen for the most part. Like, it's the eviction episode. Um, so, like, unless it's a, like, double eviction, um, I probably will prioritize uh, Amazing Race. Um, I, I don't even remember where Eileen... Actually, I don't even remember where Jaden is. <laughs> um, I have Eileen at 6. I have Jaden at... Eight of the boots so far. Out of how many is this? Sixteen. Um. Yeah, I mean, I think Jaden didn't play well at all. <laughs> um, like simply, like kind of got dragged through a game just because he's someone that isn't playing the game at all. Um, like obviously there's things to credit him socially and the fact that like again he gets picked up by Kirby and everything. Um. But. He's still not, like, particularly good. And then Eileen, again, like, would have been higher if it was not for the fact that she got eliminated. Uh, or she was going to get eliminated and, and got saved by a twist. Um, but, like, Eileen, like, plays a fine game. I mean, it's fine. But, again, she was going to get voted opposite 10 and got saved. So that knocks her a bit. Um, I have Garrick probably. Yeah, I think that's probably the case. Yeah, I do have Garrick 7. Um... Who do I have below Jaden? Viola. Yeah, okay. That probably makes sense. Um, uh, did Raymond do good this week? I mean, like, the thing is, like, Raymond was in a, like, non-winning position already, right? Like, if Raymond gets to the end uh, before this week, I think Raymond loses. I don't think, like, Raymond is someone that had much respect from a jury perspective. So, like, I think he comes out this week... At least having more respect. Like, at least there's that. I mean, I, I think if he were to get the end, he at least has an argument to make. Um, do I think it's enough? Probably not, realistically. Um, and, like, obviously, like, through this, it just opens up the possibility of him being a target as well. Wait, where the fuck is this guy? Isn't he up here? Did I climb the wrong tower? Wait, no, he is supposed to be here. Right? <laughs> Wait, how am I... Okay, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just gonna restart the mission. There's a fucking pain in AC2 because it's AC2. Uh, does Raymond remind me of Will, Malaysia Gen X? Not really. I mean, like, kind of. Like, obviously, they're, like, uh, act like they're young. Not really, though. Uh, and obviously, like, try to make a big move and that sort of thing. Um, outside of that, I, I, not really. I don't think Raymond's, like... No, taken seriously at all still um putting your chips and kitty or caroline's runner up i would agree i think that's a good uh a good shot there um like thoughts and advantage as a whole i think it's bad like it's bad as in like it's a bad advantage to have uh like it's very situational when it'll like be um effective and just trying to go for it is idiotic and uh, like Raymond did and it worked out for him but sure enough um and like they had to go to like so far the to, to actually get it through which is like 
I get like for Raymond's like at the end of the day it's like again yeah, he wasn't winning anyway like coming into this so it's like why not try something to try to win um but it is still like again very risky for like not that much benefit um yeah Mark is not again Mark's not playing particularly well <laughs> which is why I think he is winning because like the edit is propping him up as if he's playing well um and at points where he's not playing well, and then like at other points where he's not playing well, like they're just not showing him. Um, to where like I think the only point where he actually was playing poorly and they showed him as playing poorly was episode eleven, was the one right, the non limb. Which again, too fair, I don't think he would have gone anyway. But I think that was the only point where they show him as like completely aloof at what was going on. Um, like, every other time, there's, like, a fucking random Mark Confessional saying, Oh, this plan's so good for me, even though it's not really. <laughs> um... Oh, was there drama on Dealing with... I mean, there, like, Kim Atina's on, like, I don't know. There, there's, like, alliances, and that's a thing. It's not really that much drama. Um... Oh, it's still kind of funny to see Kimatina be like a main character on the show. Um, uh, would I vote for Final Two of Caroline and Mark? I mean, it depends on how they get there at this point. Right, like as of right now in the game, I would vote Caroline. But like, obviously, like I think the end game stretch is would be important to see. Um, but yeah, I, I think I would pretty heavily lean Caroline right now. Uh, but again, to be fair, like, Caroline also was benefited by the fact that, uh, Kitty didn't go home. By the way, what the fuck is Kitty flipping for? <laughs> I feel like that's also kind of gone, like, okay, yep, cool, yep, great. Um, but I feel like people aren't talking about that enough, either. Um, like, why the fuck is Kitty, uh, flipping on Caroline? Um... Like, that was... Uh, to be fair, she didn't flip on Caroline. She didn't vote for Caroline. But, like, why is she flipping to the other side? Like, it's not like you're in, like, such a minority. Um, to where, like, you're screwed. It's like you're literally down by, like, one. Um, but whatever. Oh, yeah, she's flipping back anyway. <laughs> um, this shift... I think she's 10. Um... Which, yeah, I believe she's back to being the lowest confessional guy. I believe Raymond was before this week. But now Kitty is back to being at the bottom. Oh, the people left in the game, obviously. Um, is Kirby the best player? I don't know. Maybe? Maybe, but it's like... Wait, what? Wait, why is it forcing me to do the mission again? I finished the mission, didn't I? <laughs> Wait, okay, whatever. Uh, fuck this game. Stars on Mars or UK Panama? Probably, I would rather rewatch Stars on Mars, probably. But again, the, the problem with Kitty is that I just disagree with so many of her strategic decisions. Oh, fuck off, game. Um, we're like, I'm even trying to think, like, what were, like, the strategic decisions that she's made that were actually good? Like, potentially getting rid of Eileen? Like, I think that's, like, potentially one. Um, like, outside that, it's like, what round has she actually played particularly well? I, I guess, like, Garrick Vote. Garrick Vote was good. Um, but even then, they did catch on to Garrick. <laughs> By the way, I, this is a weird season in that sense, too, where, like, just everyone seems to just know what everyone else is doing. Where, like, we, like, it happens, like, a billion times on a season where, like, someone's just, like, watching someone's conversation and, like, figures out what they're doing. It's the thing at Tribal where they're, like, seeing people at Tribal and say, oh, they're, they're not work with us. Let's flip the vote or whatever. Like, it happens, like, all the time on this season. Um, I, I agree. I, I don't know if Caroline wins a jury vote. Um, and the way that the edit has been painting her is, like, in a way to where, like, it doesn't feel like people respect her. Um, yeah, I, I think that's the thing, is that, like, everyone's playing poorly on this season. 
And obviously some are playing better than others. Like, I do think Kirby and Ferris are probably the two best players of the season. Um, but like, even them, they're not, not playing great. Um, Alright, let's try this again. Um, Join one off stream for the first time. I say he's such a child. I would agree. Yeah. That's about right. <laughs> Uh, Ian, the best pre player. I still have him number one right now. <laughs> so, yeah. Like, sure, I think Eden plays the game, like, extremely well. Like, I, I think he plays the game as optimally as he could have. Um, where, like, and to be fair, I think based on the edit, he plays the game as optimally as he could have. Like, in reality, like, we do hear about things that, like, okay, he, like, wasn't particularly... Uh, like, he, he was someone that, like, people did look at as kind of sketchy and, like, that sort of thing. But, like... Like, practically, when looking at, like, what the edit is showing us on, like, what he does in the game, I agree with almost every strategic decision he makes in the game. Um, yeah, yeah, supposedly he, like, wasn't particularly close to Jaden and that sort of thing. Like, he, he didn't, like, um, well, like, at least he didn't, like, loop him in on things. Um, but to be fair, like, did anybody? <laughs> um, but obviously it does, like, end up biting him in particular. Um... But yeah, yeah. Ian said it is weird. I, I I did talk about that, um, like a stream or two ago, where like it feels like he's like, like where like people like say he's like content is situational or whatever, or like it's like he's only been shown when necessary. That's not the case at all to me. His edit's the opposite. It's like, not the opposite opposite, but like his edit is like one where like he's not even being shown at points where he is like super important. Yeah, he's also being like shown at these like very important characters. Um what's going on here? Are they late? They haven't seen these much. Where um our characters episode well, I say characters episodes. Fuck me. Uh but yeah, like at the like again, he's he's very prominent in the premiere week. He's very prominent in the swap episode. He's very prominent in the merge episode. It's like he's like being shown at these points that are like typically very, very good signs. But then he's just, like, invisible almost every other time. And it's, like, very weird that that's the case. Um... Oh, fuck. Okay, well, cool. Um... Yeah, just start over, please. <laughs> uh... Watch Lisa Lauren's reaction to come on, ga come in guys moment. She was, uh... I was surprised she wasn't casual about it. Uh... In what way? Being upset that they... Like, I, I know she was upset... But, like, she was, like, fine with, like, come on in. Which is, like, yeah, it's, like, whatever. <laughs> um, I mean, like, at like, least the Lord, like, strikes to me as, like, pretty liberal. Um, so I feel like... Like, I'm not, I'm not surprised by her reaction there. Um... Should have moved Sheree up by one to be top 10 non-winning player. I feel like I, I would intentionally not put her in a top 10 non-winning player. Uh, because I feel like I would rather her not be on it than on it, to truth be told. Because again, it feels weird because I do feel like a lot of that... Like, because again, like my... I, I, and I said this in the in the Rank of Every Player video. That's like... The problem with, with my assessment of Sheree is that a lot of it is based on like the fact that I have so much faith in her because of her survivor run. Where if we take that out of it, she's not number 25 on the list. Uh, like, to be fair, she's still probably, like, top 50. But she's probably not that, that high. Um, the reason she is that high is because I do have so much faith in her because of how many times she's played Survivor and done well. Um, Anthony's a Canadian version of Sheree. Um, I mean, I think Anthony's the Canadian version of probably like Paul. Um, <laughs> uh, by the way, also, I, I don't love the fact that, like, this entire season's structure seems to be based around these returning players, which obviously, like, that's what you would expect. Um, like, obviously, they want these returning players to do well and everything, but I, I don't love the fact that, yeah, like, they both, uh, are guaranteed safety week one. They're both guaranteed, uh, like, one of them is guaranteed to be week one HOH. They're also guaranteed to have people that need to talk to them because of that. They have people that are in their, that have the pick to be uh, in their entourage. Like, it really feels like the show's going so far out of its way to to make sure one of them 
uh, go on to win, but it's like, whatever. Um, but again, I think it'll be interesting if Anthony dominates the season. I, I think it's like, he's definitely up there in goat, uh, uh, in the goat conversation. Um, especially like this new Anthony again, like Anthony, like that actually knows the game and like, um, has proper game knowledge and everything. Like, I think this could potentially be one of the best players we ever see. Um, we're getting, even him not knowing the game. I had him at number two best player of all time for BB Can. Like, I think if he wins this season, I think at that point, I think I would have to have him number, or actually, I think I have him three, right? Below Kevin. Either way. Um, but yeah, I think that, like, if he wins this season, I, I think he uh, wins the season in not a, like, super fluky way. Um, I think at that point, he's definitely number one BB Can. At that point, I think you argue with the US. Um, watch him go out week two. Well, I mean, that that would that would be something. <laughs> um, watch Victoria wins this win this season though. I think that'll be insane. Because like, yeah, my number one is Anthony. My number two is is Victoria right now. Um, by the way, with Big Brother at this point, I think I'm just gonna. So I did this with BB25 with my like personal power rankings. I'm gonna update them every episode, and um, I'm gonna do that BB Can as well. Uh, because like before that, I was doing like weekly, and too far I still have a weekly chart. But I think I'm gonna actually update it like every episode, which is like weird of BB Can, um, and the fact that there's such a big gap between Wednesday and Sunday, um, in between those two episodes. Um, but it's like whatever. I'll just follow that, like formula. I got I don't know what you would call that tradition. I don't know. But yeah, I'll probably just end up doing that. Um, oh yeah, Dan did not break the rules. I think for Kieran didn't break the rules either. Like, I just don't like what Kieran did, but Kieran didn't break the rules. Like, it's not like he explicitly... Like, yeah, yeah what breaking the rules is is saying, I'm a traitor, so I know Wilf is a traitor. That is breaking the rules. Like, what he did isn't breaking the rules. It's just It's kind of shit to do. <laughs> it's being a, a sore loser. Where it's like, I think with Kieran, like, Kieran's definitely worse. Where, again, Kieran is simply because he's a sore loser. But with Dan, it's, like, legitimately a move that he thought would work that he failed at. Um, okay, can he not follow me? That would be cool. Um, suppose he thinks uh, she has sway of Anthony. I la yeah, I mean, why do you think that? Oh, wait, that's not... Oh, wait, I'm an idiot. That's the courtesan, not the... Okay, cool. Um, I'm sorry, my BB Can didn't premiere your area until 11 p.m.? Why? Is there some sort of, like, weather thing going on? Um, oh, I did see this. Or at least I, I heard this from the RGP podcast. They talked about this about Scott. Or Scott, finally. Scout uh, saying this about uh, Jelinski and calling him Zelinski. <laughs> um, which is funny. Um, player ranking as in like this season like the people that are uh, so I, I have Anthony 1 Victoria 2 after that it's like kind of like whatever uh, I have Avery 3 the, like uh, again like the thing is like we just have so low information I think the pro like I think with Avery I do have like criticisms like I mean Avery is being talked about as like a big player um, and like someone that isn't like fully fully trusted um, and I would not be shocked if Anthony makes a move against Avery, um, like at some point, but I do think like the fact that Victoria, that like Avery is like Victoria's closest girl and like Avery is a super fan. She knows the game. At least that's something. Um, then for Kayla, then Lexus, I mean, like really, I don't know who's higher Kayla or Lexus, but they're there. They're in the all girls Alliance. Uh, no one's really talking about them as targets. Uh, seemingly, like I know Victoria initially said that she didn't like Lexus, but supposedly like she turned around on that. Um, so, oh, the Kayla. Okay, so Kayla does have like a formal group. Okay, so Kayla would probably be higher than Lexus. Um, but I Bailey six. Bailey's also in the Girls Alliance. I mean, no one's targeting her. Uh, I don't think anybody's talking about taking her out or anything. I remember. Was it Victoria? Like, I, in, like, one of the first few days, they'd say that, that she's probably, like, the girl she's the least close to or something. But, like, I mean... I know you're only I, doing I, I, as you're like, told. we have so little information. I'm like, whatever, she's six. 
Uh, I have Vivix 7. I mean, Vivix kind of all over the place. Where, like, there's points where Vivix, like, seeming to do well, and then there's points where he's not. <laughs> um, where, like, it seemed like... Like, I don't know, it's just, it's just kind of weird. Where, like, it feels like the updates I've seen recently have been, like, higher on Vivix. Or, v it's, actually, it's not Vivic, right? It's, um... How do you pronounce his name again? I know it's not Vivic, though. Uh, because I, I remember, I, like, I've been saying it wrong, but I just don't remember what the right one is. Um... But... Yeah, it's like, I mean, yeah, like, I think at the end of the day, it's like, he... is someone that's kind of being snowed by Anthony. And, like, early on, we did see, like, talk about, like, Anthony saying that, oh, he's coming for the vets and everything. But, like, I don't know how much, like, how much of that is real, though. <laughs> Which is also, I think, the tough thing about this, too, about the digital dailies, is that how much of this is, like, real and how much of this is just them placating whoever they're talking to. Um, or, like, I think it's pretty clear at this point that Anthony's definitely not telling Victoria everything, right? Like, I think Victoria is telling Anthony most things. I definitely don't think Anthony's telling Victoria everything. To where, like, I don't know if I even fully believe, like, what Anthony is saying to Victoria. Uh, which, like, makes it tough to, like, truly gauge uh, where other people are in the game. Because, like, straight up, I think it comes down to, like, what are Anthony and Victoria thinking about them. But if, like, Anthony's not even being truthful to Victoria, then, like, how do we even gauge, like, um, how they're doing? <laughs> uh, Vivek? Vivek? Is that really what it is? Sounds weird. Um, I think it's Vivek. 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 That sounds better. I don't remember. Anyway, I'll figure it out eventually. Hopefully. Uh, do you think Anthony will be able to stick with us now? Yeah, yeah. Um, the thing is, I think like Anthony is going to protect. Like, I, 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 I do believe that Anthony is intending on going to the end of Victoria at this point. Um, but I think he definitely will be making moves to undercut her along the way, though. Though, I think it will be interesting, though, seeing Anthony play this. Because, like, that was the thing about, like, Anthony's BB Can 7 game. That I think it was, like... I don't know. It's like, uh, yeah, like in B in BB Can Seven, like Anthony, like again, was super loyal to Dane, um, until Dane wasn't loyal to him. Um, though was still like making like was like get okay, fuck me, you know what, fuck it, kill me, kill me at this point. Um, to where like again, like he never like actually wanted Dane out at any point until Dane made the move against Corey, and he was like, okay, maybe I need to stop trusting Dane, and then obviously course corrected the power five. Um, but, okay, Anthony is the type of player that I, I feel like he is going to try to undercut his, uh, opposition, though. So while he's going to be, like, again, while he's going to be super loyal to V, I just, like, feel like, again, like, someone like Avery is someone that he's definitely going to take out at some point. Um, okay, cool. Uh, I think it's hard to gauge how the returnees are going to, are doing, because they're immune. Yeah, that's also a thing. Um... That, like, they're in this position where, like, no one can even talk about targeting them anyway. But to be fair, I, I feel like they are still in a pretty powerful position anyway. Where, like, the thing is, like, every alliance that we've seen is... Or not every, but, like, a lot of the alliances we've seen so far have been based around the returnees. Where, like, it feels like the returnees are essentially in almost every single alliance. Where, like, what alliances are there... Again, alliances not, like final two deals sort of things but like actual proper alliances like what alliances are there that don't involve them like I, I know the old people had like a group at one point though they're on the bottom and they're probably going up this week um but it's like outside of them it's like i feel like every other alliance has anthony or victoria in it um Uh, Matt and Todd, I think we're talking about cutting Anthony mid-season. Uh, that's probably what you should do. <laughs> um, I, I think it's also, like, I think this is a tough, like, really, I, 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 I have a tough time assessing the men of this cast in particular. Where, like, I just don't know where they're at, a lot of them. Like, I know Matthew is someone that's being talked about as a target. Um, 
so okay, I'm not like not for this week I don't believe but like for down the road where like I'm not looking at him particularly highly um actually I might as well run through the rest of the power rankings so yeah, I have Elijah 8 because Elijah's there no one's talking about him Todd at 9 uh kind of similar thing um though I, I uh, like really I feel like with Elijah it's more so like I don't see anyone going for Elijah where I can at least see people going for Todd probably but it's like whatever um like really it's interchangeable I have Donna at 10 again I think Donna's probably the worst position of the well not I guess Janine's worse but like Donna's probably the worst position of the, the younger women at least um Matthew at 11 again I think Matthew's probably gonna be targeted at some point uh Dennis that's how you pronounce his name right um Dennis is being talked about as a target um for down the road uh people are looking at him as a big player and everything so it's like not great uh for him especially if he loses Tola uh this week who's like someone that's in his corner uh Janine at 13 I I believe Janine is going on the block right um so she's in potential danger there's talk about targeting her from or like there's like Anthony's talked about, like, oh, we we need to get Janine out and that sort of thing. But like, again, she does have the women that, assumedly, would want to keep her around. So, whatever. And then uh, last, I've told her because Tola's probably gone unless he wins veto. Um. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't think people don't like Tola entirely. I just think they think of him. Uh, it's like because like you see people say that. Oh, I think Tola's a good guy, but. Where it's like, I don't know, it just feels like people like don't necessarily trust him. Is probably more of a thing, um, more so than they, like don't like him. Um, potentially, but like even then, I mean, like again, like the women should have the numbers, right? I guess it depends on who goes on the block. Um, but like if the women want to save Janine, then Janine probably stays. To where, like that's why I'm like, well, like. Now, I can't tell if Janine is really in danger or not. <laughs> um, yeah, but Jan Spicy V could also get the votes to save Janine also. Like, it really goes either way. We don't really know where they're leaning. Where is Spicy V really going to want to get rid of a woman right away? Despite, like, all of her talk about, like, uh, the women need to stick together and everything. Um, it's where... And, like, her explicitly, like, trying to get Anthony to target a guy. It's like, is she really going to let a woman go home first? Like, I'm not sure. Um, like, I don't know if she'll necessarily do everything that Anthony wants. Like, I, I don't think she'll ever go against Anthony or anything. But I think she definitely has her own agenda. It's just a matter of, is she going to be able to get her agenda? Um, uh, rank games with Jess, Jessica, and Je okay. I mean, I actually really, it's like Jess in the UK by a lot, right? And then it's probably Jess Titans or Rebels, then Jess 46. Maybe, I don't know. That, that one's like whatever. It's like they're both bad. Um, yeah I, I don't even know who's like really better of those two but Leonardo. i think number one Leonardo. would be just uk uh and then should be putting janine and kayla um I mean, if he has an alliance with kayla then no right i'm mean, thinking like, who are the options I, I don't remember the teams well enough um, like obviously tola's uh like toll so okay wait, how many people is it it's six people right so it's what Tola, Janine, uh, Matthew. I know is in that group. Um, uh, obviously Kayla, uh, Avery, and one other person. But yeah, I mean, like his his options are extremely limited, um, which obviously makes it a bit tough. Uh, I want to go. Oh, I don't, I don't want to go to either of those. Oh, no, 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 I remember what you do. You you go here, and then you fast draw back, right? So I can go straight to the gate. Um, Todd. Todd's the other one. Yeah, it's it's, it's tough. Like, his, his options are just so limited there. 
So, like, the issue is that he has an alliance with Avery and Kayla. Um, and also, like, those are people that, like, I don't think Victoria would be particularly happy with if he puts Avery in particular up. Um, wait, which one do I want to go to? I don't even know. I think it's Northgate. Eh, whatever. We'll see. Uh... I mean, yeah, like, right now he's putting up Tola and Janina, I assume. But, like, who is he put up if there's a veto or whatever? I think that's where it gets a bit tricky. Um, was getting out Jessica move for Q? No, right? I mean, I, it's obviously, like, a complex move in the sense that... Okay, this was the wrong one. Um, in the sense that, obviously, like, you have to factor in, like, challenge strength and all that sort of thing to it, too. Am I really going to waste all this time? There's no point in doing any of this, is there? I, I should just go... Uh, manually. Uh, like, just wasting time. Fast traveling back and forth. Um. Wait. Oh, fuck off! I really- I fast traveled the wrong one, even there. I want to go to Monster Droni. Um. But. Yeah, unnecessary to visit swing. I think the thing that's tough is that, like, Q is potentially in danger, like, if they get to three, right? Like, if this is really a tribe that's just going to continue losing over and over and over again, like, I think he's in danger at three. Like, obviously, Tiffany is the is the cider at that point. But, like, why would she want Q over, over Kenzie coming into the merge? Next episode swap? I don't think next episode swap, is it? Oh, well, yeah, but they don't know that there's... Even then, like, they don't know that there's a swap, though. Again, all they've seen is 43-44. They haven't seen 45, so they don't even know that there is a swap. So, if, like, to them, like, they're thinking that we're probably going to stay in these the entire time. Until the merge. Um, at best, get, like, a 44 swap of, like, one person. So, it's like, I think if I'm Q... Like, if I was Q, I would flip, probably. Uh, and vote out Kenzie. But the thing is, like, at that point, like, you also need to secure Banu, though. And, like, Banu's Banu. So it's like... <laughs> like, I, I think it's a tough spot either way. I think, like, ideally, in an ideal world, I would get rid of Kenzie for, for Q. Um, because that splits up uh, Kenzie and Tiffany. Um, Kenzie, uh, Kenzie and herself is not, like, the best challenge competitor in the world anyway. Um... And makes Tiffany more loyal to you. That means next time you have a very easy vote off. Um, with Jess and, and Banu going after each other. Um, I think the issue too right now is that like Banu is someone that you can't let get to the merge, right? Uh, like it's going to be tough. Uh, if if Banu gets to the merge uh, for, your, for your group. So while he, he'll be a loyal number, I, like, I would be shocked if Banu's type herself flip on his group. But yeah, he's just so unreliable as a number. Like it's kind of a similar thing to Kelly on Australian Survivor this season, where it's like, like I disagree with the decision to take out Kelly from most people involved in that vote. But I understand it in the sense that yeah, get rid of Kelly before it merge because it's Kelly. It's just gonna mess up your plans coming into the merge. Um, where my anti for Rebels review? I have written up to episode fifteen, and I've recorded up to episode twelve. I've not edited anything, which is a worry. Um, by the way, also, I think I've decided to delay the review a little bit. Where, like, initially... So, like, the season, I presume, is going to end on the 19th? Is that the date? Yes, the 19th. Um, so, my initial plan was to have the video out on the 20th. Like, I was going to try to get everything prepared... Uh, well, pr pr prepared. There we go. What the fuck? Um... To, like, just rush it through on the final day and, like, get it out the next day. Um, I just think I'm not going to bother at this point. It's not even really worth it. Um, uh, to where... Uh, yeah, especially considering the fact that, like, I'm, I'm, like, relatively far behind at this point. Like, even then. It's like, I just really don't fucking care enough to fucking rush the video out that much. To where it's like, it'll come on the Saturday. Uh, following instead of the Wednesday. Um... Now, obviously, player rank will still be next. And it doesn't change the schedule really at all. It does just swap 
the Australian Fire videos with the BB Can season ranking, which was going to come out the following week anyway. So, like, it doesn't change anything really. Uh, always forget. Yeah, I forget too. Like, until like we get the shots of him like uh, taking off the thing where like he lets his hair down. It's like, holy shit, his hair is really long. Uh, worst player ever? I don't know. Um, I would say debatably top 10? I don't know. Where, like, she's really bad. Like, she's, like, a person that is, like, so practically bad. But it's, like, it's tough to, like, gauge when, like, we're trying to also take their games into account. Because, like, she obviously makes it much further than a lot of other people. And we have a lot more information on her, which, again, is, is a pro and a con. Like, it's information in the sense that, like, okay, we, we know she can make it at least towards the merge. Um, but it's also information in the sense that, okay, we know how bad she is also. Um, Circle Back Season 2 would be March 31st. Interesting. Um, I believe the mid season Power Ranking 46 will be the video after the Titans vs. Rebels player ranking. Um, where it lines up that way. It's where that should be the merge. Or, yeah, like, coming into the merge. Uh, I think it's like April. Oh, not even April. Uh, March thirtieth uh, will be when that video comes out. Uh, by the way, Traders finale is tomorrow. I feel like no one gives a shit anymore. <laughs> but Traders uh, ends tomorrow. That's something. Um, I'll be rushing the review together on Friday. Uh, the end of it, at least, obviously. Uh, Hey, Viber. I'm gonna fail this, aren't I? Like, this is going really terribly. Uh, I think Kirby gives her necklace to Rihanna, ruin the chance to flip the vote. Um, flip the vote in what way? So, like, in terms of, like, splitting votes? That, like, uh, like you're saying that, like, people want to split the vote on Rihanna, but, like, when Rihanna has immunity, they're like, okay, what's the point? Is that what we're talking about? Uh, either way, probably not. I, I don't think it was gonna happen either way. Based on like what we were seeing from before that, at least. Yeah, I knew I was gonna fail that. <laughs> um, Trace finale is happening tomorrow, uh, and all the talk is about Phaedra and Dan. Yeah. Um, I mean, like, there is also like a lot of people are saying like we're getting like reports of like oh that there's gonna be a big moment at the end, which is like, what's the big moment gonna be? Like, what would the big moment even be? Basically, yeah, like, I, I feel, like, 100% confident we're getting a faithful win. Um, but, like, what would the big moment be? Would it be, like... Uh, like, is it that they, like, continue voting even after all the traitors are gone? I assume that's probably what it is, right? Like, I say, like, probably, like, Sandra and Kate are the first two gone. Um, I got, like, this is why... I, okay, so, like, let's just give a rundown, like, what I think is gonna happen in the finale. Um, I think Sheree gets murdered. Um... I think it's, well, actually, it's either Sheree or it's Sandra. I think those are the two options. I think, again, Kate is Kate, so if it's she's voting out the person she dislikes the most, then it'll probably be Sandra. Um, but also, I feel like just edit-wise, like, Sheree is just such a non-entity on this season that it's like, I think it would make sense if she's the final person murdered. Um, so, like, those are my two options there. Um... Even though I think, like, logically also, like, Trishel would also be an option. Um, but I think that plays the why I think this, like, big moment probably is at this point. Um, but, yeah, then... Okay, I think Kate, Sandra... Like, essentially, I think the final three will probably be CT, Trishel, and MJ. Um, I think that's probably the final three. And then I wonder if, like, the big moment is that they decide to vote anyway. And it's essentially, like, CT's decision of who wins with him between Trishel and, and MJ. Like, I wonder if that's what they're talking about. CT is the best player, I, I, I guess. I mean, like, I'm just going to die here, aren't I? Uh...
Yeah, like I, I would not be shocked if the if it's a Trishel CT win. I feel like that would make a lot of sense considering how much focus there was in, in Reddit. Um, was the game other than FF16 I was the bang pulling out in one for last year? Oh, Alan Wake 2. Yeah, it's FF16 or Alan Wake 2. I, I think uh, right now I'm kind of leaning Alan Wake 2. But, I don't know. The thing is, like, I enjoyed playing 16 more. But, um... I have more respect for... For Alan Wake 2, though. Uh, oh, yeah, I forgot. We haven't talked about that. No, I, I decided I'm just not going to watch it. Um... I'm not going to bother watching uh, Celebrity Big Brother UK. I just don't care. And I have so much other shit to watch right now. I'm like, I, I don't give a shit enough about the show. Um, so I, I think the end of uh, the last UK season kind of like tainted me of like, I just don't care anymore. Um, it was it was cool to get back into it for like the first week or so. But then like once it like continued on after that, I'm like, okay, I, I, I don't fucking care enough to watch these people just live in a fucking house and do nothing fucking else outside of like dumb tasks. Um. Okay. Uh, is that the seven taking sixteen now? In my opinion, sixteen was already that way. Okay, cool. I love how it played the animation. I played the sound for the animation, but didn't do the actual animation. Uh, should become the first YouTuber to make us for our back rush with the player ranking. I think I'm good. Dude, I can't even imagine rewatching that season. That seems so miserable. <laughs> to rewatch Survivor Code back. Yeah, I, I know, Shannon. Like, I, I've seen, like, the updates online and stuff, but I, I, I'm just not going to bother watching it. Do I have smoke bombs already? Oh, I'm an idiot. That's why. I was pushing the wrong button to heal. <laughs> uh... What game was I thinking that's up? I think it's Horizon, isn't it? Um, yeah, and if I were to do a retrospective, it would, like, I would have the, like, it won't be an episode by episode thing at that point. It's like, fuck that. Yeah, doing a fucking 67 episode retrospective. Like, that sounds so miserable. <laughs> like, even Australian Survivor right now is brutal at 24. Dude, fuck off. Okay. Uh, with Reaper be something I feel obligated to be number one like last year. I mean, we'll have to see what else comes out this year is really a thing. The thing is, like, this is not a year that I'm looking at too highly right now. Like, this is not a year that has, like, that many games that I'm, like, excited for. Um, so, we'll have to see. I mean, like, like, if I'm looking back at last year, of, like, where I would have Rebirth as of right now in comparison to the games from last year, like, I, I think 16 is higher. I think Spider-Man 2 is higher. Um, I think it's when we get to Jassance. I don't know. I think it's, like, it's probably close. It's probably, like, RE4, Jedi Survivor back-to-back. -back. I think that's probably where I have Rebirth right now. Um... Or, I mean, there are things to like. I just hate how the game is structured. <laughs> um, but, I don't know. I, I'm just, like, very... Um, I'm just very conflicted on, like, what I really think of Rebirth. And we'll, we'll see where the story ends up. Um, because I could see where, where that does change some things. But I, I still think, like, at the end of the day, the gameplay is such a fucking chore. <laughs> Uh, Raymond shit seems wild. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. imagine someone did that like without that advantage, though. Where, like, too, truly though, like, I think this is something that if this were to happen outside of this like specific context with this specific advantage, um, I could definitely see where, where like Raymond just loses all respect and no one get like no one likes Raymond. Uh, and, like, would not give him the win. I think, like, the fact that it was this specific advantage, um, I think it's something that definitely, uh, helps him in terms of perception with this. Um. Because I think outside of that, like, this is just straight up be looked at as, like, a really, like, dirty move. Um.
where like it's also like unnecessary if it wasn't for the fact of this advantage. Um, actually, wait, where did numbers land anyway? Like, did they have the numbers outright to vote out Valeria? I think they were close, right? They at least have four. So I think they might need one more. Means why it's it's Kirby, Rihanna, Ferris, Raymond. Then how are the other people? So you got like Alex, Caroline, Kit. Well, they they assumedly had Kitty for at that point. It would be like Kitty as the swing, right? Thank you, Ezio. You saved. Um, which like straight up, I should also say, I think like. I think I would have rather just had a normal round of gameplay than... Yeah, obviously, yeah, I think they probably would have used Ferris Slate at that point. Um, but yeah, I, I think I personally would have just had a rather, like, a, a, a standard round of gameplay than, than this twist. Um, where, like, it's obviously something unique and everything, but it's like... I feel like I would have rather had this, like, big vote that's, like, this... Uh, again, this very, uh big like fight for Basta. kitty's loyalty and everything no i think that would have been a lot more interesting Don't worry, um I'll come up with something. Well, i think venus can win like Don't just stand I mean, there. I need help. do i think venus can win <gasps> like logically i don't know if venus can win edit wise it's like i mean i think there are things that are like decent about her edit. there's also a lot of things bad about her edit also so it's like um really i don't feel confident in anybody winning right now outside of maybe maria Yeah, like, game, like, practically, I don't know if Venus can win. Or, like, I, I feel like it's just gonna be, like, such a tough road uh, to that. And, like, okay. Um, uh, <laughs> game? Please? Well, that's great. Um, is Maria having a D edit? Not particularly. Or by this point, I don't even think D had. Uh, uh, no, I guess she did have a setup relationship. But like, actually, straight. Up, I think Maria's edit is stronger at this point than. Yeah, I did move the joystick. Um, yeah, I, I think Maria's edit is stronger than D's at this point last season. I had D at what number five at this point last season. This is so stupid. Why? Why? Is, okay, wait. Let, let's. There we go. There we go. Cool. Um. Now it's working. Um. Uh, yeah, I had her at six after the premiere. And I had her at five after episode two, and then I had her one after that for a while. And I, I think like I had Emily at one at like a point in the season. Madonna. But really, from episode three on, I, I had D at number one for a lot of it. Um, Venus and D have the toe edit. Obviously, that's obviously the the sign. Um, like I, I do want D to do well, or D fucking uh, want Venus to do well. Like I would be shocked if Venus is like the Emily of the season. Um, like the person who gets like. Uh, this, like, big journey style edit. But also, something I do find weird, like, I mean, like, I like, uh, something I do find weird about yes. Venus. Um, I love how, like, her entire story is about how, like, oh, I haven't had things handed to me, only to then describe her getting things handed to her. <laughs> um, like, her entire thing's like, oh, I'm not a princess, I haven't had things handed to me, and it's like, uh, uh, and then talks about, like, how her parents, like, moved out of their home country for her. <laughs> to raise their kid in a better area it's like isn't that something that a princess like isn't that you being handed that by your parents but whatever um hope she outlasts tevin um i don't know if that's happening but we'll see i i think tevin's set up for long term at least like i could see tevin being like final eight boot Something like that. Like, the Shan Careful, of the season. You know but I, I would be shocked if he's booted before, like, uh, 
think so, Ezio. Well, Final Ten. Before jury, at least. Um, is Venus the Ellie of 46? Not real, like, not really? <laughs> That's like radically different edits. Um, uh, just, just cool. If I was in Survivor, I, uh, I see it going exactly like her run. Um, yeah, I mean, was she doing her best though? I guess she was like considering her situation or whatever, but like, she probably could have tried a little bit more. Better than all right. Um, amazing progress. Amazing is quite a strong word. Should make an April Fool's video where I make up a random cast of Survivor returnees and do a cast reaction. Uh, I, don't know, I, I wouldn't do that. I think that's too far. Like, essentially, like, fake a Survivor 50 cast or whatever and do a reaction. I, I wouldn't do that. I think that's too far. Um, because I think there'll be people that actually like, take it seriously and people that aren't going to be, like, so upset. Uh, and, like, talk about, like, oh, it's just clickbait, clickbait and that sort of thing, which it is. Um... Subject 16. Think Kenzie's the merge boot. Yeah, I think I could see Kenzie being like an Ellie. For way too long. Sometimes days at a time. We'll I think that careful. makes more sense. I hope so. Uh, how much do anyway, you and your friend like each other on a scale of 45 cast to 46 cast? What does that even mean? Great. Meet me downstairs when you're ready. I don't even know what that even means. <laughs> but okay. Um This episode felt wait, this episode for Tevin felt really negative. Um, yeah, I, I think it definitely had a negative tinge to it. Um, that's why I'm kind of leaning more so towards, like, a Shan trajectory. By the way, again, I've been rewatching 41. How the fuck did anyone think Shan was winning that season? <laughs> uh, straight up, I, I, I will say, I will admit, uh, that, like, okay, I, I, Tiffany's edit is worse than I remembered at points. Uh, but also, how the fuck did anyone think Shan was winning that season? Um, you've managed to retain. Like, it was like, Shan was, like, the number one contender for most of the season. I'm like, how? Like, rewatching it, it's, like, it's so clear. And, like, that was the, that, like, how I thought about it at the time, too. But, like, rewatching it, it's, like, even more clear. Like, Shan is not winning this season, uh, being edited this way. I will say, though, in retrospect, I don't even know who the top contender is, though. Or, like, I think that plays in the Y41 is such a fucked edit. Like, no one gets a particularly good edit <laughs> for most of the season. Um, like, through the pre-merge, like, I, I probably still stand by Tiffany's number one, but it's like, like, everyone's edit is bad. Like, the Sean, like, the problem with the Sean is that he's, like, shown to, like, be creating, um, the, uh, what's it called? The, uh, like, throw the challenge plan and that ends up failing. Um, there's also a big tell, too. What was the big tell in the premiere? I'm seeing things. Ricard is, like, not even that prevalent in the edit. Like, Ricard is, like, pre merge is essentially, like, shown when absolutely necessary. Liana, like, is set up for a fall very early on. Like, Liana, like, has the big thing of, like, uh, I need to prove that I'm a good player. And then they show, like, the advantage right in front of her and she doesn't see it. And then the next uh, day, Tiffany finds it and she's like, oh my god, this is so, uh, like, uh, like it, I don't know, whatever. It, it's essentially, like, yeah, it, it never shows her particularly positively. Um, then you got, like, Danny's only shown when absolutely necessary. Um, obviously, Erica's not even there. Uh, at least not that much. Heather's only there for the one emotional moment. Uh, Sydney gets negativity. Uh, well, I'm mean, too fair. Obviously, Tiffany also gets negativity. But, like, um, a lot of, like, her edit is based around the negativity. Um, yeah, who, who else even is there? Again, like, it's just, like, Evie is, like, overexposed. Um, just, like, no one. No one No one gets that grave an edit on, on 41. Trug, it's just a bit of a train wreck. Uh, I think we'll find the Sega Beware Vantage. Hmm. Yeah, that's the only one not found at this point, isn't it? All right, you gotta tell me why Ezio, why Italy. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. Back to Altair again. 
I don't know if anyone's like has these like clear signs for it. If I were to guess, I would say it's between like Tim, Jem, and Maria. I would say. Um, oh yeah, I forgot about the quiz. Fuck, we're already an hour and a half in the stream. Um, did we shut down Rooster Teeth? I did see that. I don't really... I don't know, I never watched anything on Rooster Teeth, so... I have no real connection to it, but... Yeah, that is a thing. Um, there was an auction in Panama. False. Auction in China. There wasn't an auction in China. True. Um, everyone's colors different on the computer. Yeah, that's the thing that's weird to me, too, is that, like, the colors are different, like, on, uh... Yeah, on my PC and on my phone, because I have both up at the same time. Um, Nick was too high in a 43 player rank, you should at least be below Ellie. Did I Nick go above Net Ellie? I don't even remember that. Is that a thing? <laughs> Why did I have Nick above Ellie? Wait, let's see. Uh, 43... Oh, yeah, I did. Huh. Yeah, I remember that. Why did I have Nika high? I don't even remember why I would have Nika that high. <laughs> um... Would I like to see Sora 50 have a merge of all 18 players? No. <laughs> um... I mean, like, that would essentially just be a, like, a one-world twist, right? Like, it's, like, without tribes, just without tribes inside. Like, it would essentially just be a season without tribes. Um, uh, you understand I hate her? Who is this? Uh, which one are you talking about? Victoria or, uh, or, uh, Avery? Uh, I assume Ellie would have been next to go on Baka if they went, and Neko was really well-liked. Like, I, 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 I can see it to a degree in the sense that, like, okay, NECA, like, was voted out because of physical strength. Uh, while, yeah, like, she was, well, like, she, like, Cody and Jesse did want to keep her around. They just felt like they couldn't. Um, I think in retrospect, though, that, that yeah, I, I would agree. Like, Ellie should be higher than NECA. Um... Where, yeah, I, I don't even remember that list, but... Uh, like Casey, but even more boring. I mean, you think Avery's more boring than Casey? Seems hard to do. Um, oh, yeah, 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 Persona 3. I did watch the Xbox partner thing uh, at, like, two times speed. But, yeah, they didn't announce that, DLC, which we, we knew. But, uh, we'll see if I play it by then. It's kind of annoying because I, I mentioned this before that I think I'm going to end up buying it on PlayStation anyway. <laughs> Because I think it'll just bother me uh, to play Reload without commentary. So I guess I'm just going to buy it on PlayStation anyway. Either that, or I could... Sh I'm not going to stream it though, am I? Uh, there's no fucking way I'm streaming Persona 3 Reload. You see if I want... And also, especially considering how shit Xbox is anyway. Um... Uh, she literally said it was so dark that Donna said that she would m emotionally manipulate Anthony. What's that even me? <laughs> she would ignore everybody? I'm sure that'll go well. Um, but even then, like, I feel like it would, like, for I don't know. I, I, I just won't. I will say, though, I, I'm, I'm a bit more open now to streaming games that I haven't played before, though. After having done AC1. I will say though. It, it will probably have to be for a game. That I'm not like. Actually doing a video on. Um, but I, I would not be opposed. To like doing what I did with AC1. Of like playing a game on stream. And then just like. Um, afterwards. Like uploading it in like 30 minute parts. To the VOD channel. Or to the Let's Play channel. And like that be the way I. Um, 
I keep those around because again, my my hesitation of like streaming games I haven't played before has always been like, well, I I want footage of these games in case I ever want to do a video that include that I have to talk about those games. Um, but like obviously, I don't want to keep around these like four hour chunks of gameplay. Um, but obviously, like yeah, I, I like remember that obviously like I could just break them up into thirty minute parts on Twitch. Uh, and then upload them that way, and that makes it easier. So, uh, I think that's probably, uh, I guess, something I'll be more willing to do moving forward. But again, I think it'll probably still be reserved for like a game that, like, I think it'll be like, I think a game that I'm like, like potentially a 2023 game. I wouldn't be opposed to streaming a game for like the year in gaming videos at this point. Um, but I probably wouldn't be willing to do something I'm doing like. A big like I wouldn't be doing rebirth on stream um which like I'm properly gonna do a video on and everything which by the way I don't know what I'm even gonna like <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing with the rebirth video um uh, or like I, I don't even really have time to make it is also the the issue um <laughs> uh, so I don't know if I'm just gonna intentionally make it short or what Especially if I'm like coming out of it being extremely negative. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Um, was the answer? It's um, I believe it's the FES content, right? Where every Persona game, like after it comes out, they re-release the game, but with extra content. I believe the answer is that extra content for Persona Three, where the current version of Persona Three Reload is just a remake of the base game, um, with like them intentionally leaving out the. The extra content at launch even though they should have had it there um but this is just that content being added to it um yeah like post game stuff essentially yeah um ranked recruited traders re kate mickey camille i mean camille probably won re2 wait a second uh kate three then mickey i guess they're all like not that great. Camille's like the only like, I guess to be fair, Ari Ari's not that that bad realistically. Um, first game they showed was like for Spoken. Uh, yeah, I don't even remember what was the game again. It had like a weird name, right? But yeah, it looked fine. Uh, yeah, where am I at the quiz? Uh, auction Guatemala, yes. Uh, who's the odd one out? Margaret, Bob Dog, Alex, Becky, Brooke like Struck. We will... Hey, you okay? Uh, yeah, yeah, all good. Weird dreams. Uh, all right. I'll let you go lawyers? You. I assume? Was ah, Bro what was Brooke Struck? Sorry. Well, it's either Brooke or, or Margaret. Professional approach. Leave him alone. I just don't remember well, which one... Well, Margaret was a doctor, so it's Margaret, right? But was Brooke Struck a lawyer? Was Brooke Struck? I thought Brooke Struck was a cop for some reason. Oh no, she was a law student. Okay, I guess she's a lawyer, huh? Did I just completely misremember that? Um, that seems like a whole business of assholes, pretty much. And what's funny though is that they're probably like the best company nowadays. Uh, you never take a brick struck. I mean, the only thing I remember brick struck is, um, is Rob Sessionio having a crush on her. That's the only thing I remember. Um, what is this? Sue's big move? I can't wait for Sue's big move. Um, the survivor get rid of themes because it saves the casting department, the time when it comes to casting players. I think it's because they don't want to be pigeonholed into casting certain people because they fit a theme. I think it's more of the thing. And I think they they like really felt like they had to force it the last few seasons. So I feel like they were just at the point where it's like, what's the point? Um, and to be fair, like, it's funny because like people were okay with that decision when they made it. Yeah, are now upset that the themes are gone and everything. Uh, like, sure, I personally don't care that much that the themes are gone. Like, I, I think if I were to pick, like, ideally, I would have themes. Ideally. But do I need it? Not really. 
I'm Elvira. Um, Senor Don has asked that I escort you to the workshop. Are you ready? Like, I, I don't particularly care that much. Um... And I know people are saying that, oh, Titans vs. Rebels, so refreshing to see a theme again. It's like, is it? I just think it's fucking stupid. <laughs> it's like, it's funny how stupid it is at points. But it is stupid, though. Um, which, by the way, I love how the theme is such an afterthought at this point. Like, no one is talking about the theme at all. Um, I'll see you later, Sorokul. Um, what time is it? That's one. Yeah, next stream's gonna be a pain, by the way, because I I, I I do have to get up early on Monday, um, but I'll probably still end up streaming for forever anyway. Um, here's the heroes. I can't wait. To be fair, it would probably be like heroes versus anti heroes. But sure, like I mean, the comment like again, the pe people's comments about like um, Jeff or like, I think people were mis uh, understanding Jeff's comment about no villains which like should be obvious it says that we literally just got the Jelinski um but anyway, what Jeff means by no villains is essentially like he doesn't want bullies <laughs> um and he doesn't want like terrible human beings like he's okay with drama and like stuff like that and like people playing the game like uh like aggressively and that sort of thing um, but, like, he, what he means is that he doesn't want, like, a person who's, like, gonna get in a fist fight or something. <laughs> um, Look, isn't it amazing? yeah, st stream early? I can't on Sunday. I could technically on Wednesday, but you know, that would cut into, like, Amazing Race and stuff like that. Um... But yeah, even if I wanted to, I can't really stream on earlier on Sunday. Like, I could probably stream at, like, 10.30 or something. But, like, um, not much earlier. Uh, thoughts on the whole plot of Yanu planting a fake idol for Just the Fine? Um, this humorous TV, I mean, like, it's, it's, like, largely unnecessary, though. Um, where yeah i don't feel like it need, like they needed to do that i think all they needed to do is just convince jess that they're voting for banu which it seemed like they did anyway um they say they're fighting for the people and like sure i i don't particularly like how like uh how kenzie tiffany and q acted just in general of kind of like laughing behind her back and that sort of thing like that stuff's not great um they destroyed my stand but compensation yeah, like just in general, I feel like the move is like largely unnecessary. Uh, yeah, where, where am I at this? Uh, third vote out Cook Islands, that's Cecilia. Uh, title of the Panama Premier. I think it's the first exile. No, it's not. It's, um, is it? It could be, it's either next exile or none of those. I know it's not the other three. Um, a bunch of idiots. I, I mean,. I guess. Uh, the Yano become the Lulu of the season. I think they already are, just not even as likable. Uh, you'll buy Jess's cameo. I mean, let's see if she gets the offer to be on cameo. To be fair, I think Abraham is on cameo. So if Abraham's on cameo, you would assume Jess would be. No expense in its design. Well, Nami never go to tribal. Uh, potentially. Definitely a chance. And hope you enjoy Venezia as much as she. I can also see, see, like, really, I mean, like, I would not be shocked if just Yanu goes to every tribal until the swap. So, here we are. But yeah, we're probably swapping, what, episode four, if we're following the 45 structure. Maybe later. Uh, like, probably, like, next round, probably Banu goes, and then we swap. Um, like, I think that's, like, a realistic possibility. Don't hesitate to visit. My door is always open. Grazie, my friend. So, oh, wait, let me hit that. Um, so yeah, like I, I think it, like yeah, if I'm picking a boot for next episode, I think it's probably Banu. I, I think it just makes sense. Um, okay, I, I think Yanu is already in a, a spot where like it's very likely they're just gonna lose the challenge again. And if that's the case, I, I think it's Banu. Like even if they won, like the thing is like Tiffany would have the flip on Kenzie for Kenzie to go home. Um, and even then, Banu would have to be on board, despite the fact that Banu seems to be, like, super close to Kenzie. Um, 
I don't know. I think it's just more likely they just go and vote out Banu. Um, so, yeah, like, I think if they go tribal, I think Banu's gone there. I think the other two tribes are interesting because, again, like, I still think Tim is probably the one gone from, uh, from Sega. What's the actual mission now? Um, by the way, we're at the worst part of the game. That's something. Um, yeah, I think Tim's probably still gone up with Sega. And then Orange is just like, don't know. Could be anybody. Like, obviously, like, we're getting to set up a Venus, but it feels like so heavy handed to where, like, I don't know if Venus, like, I feel like I would feel like it's more likely Randon, but like Randon has an idol. So like, at that point, is it Liz? I don't know. <laughs> But again, maybe that is just a sign of like, okay, maybe just they don't go to tribal then. Um, yeah, if, if it is a woman on, on Sega, I think it'll be Mariah. I think that those are two options, or Tim and Mariah. I would lean towards Tim right now. Um, just because I feel like the signs are there. Um, though, to be fair, I think this episode was interesting, though, where Charlie did seem to be more on board with the men. Um, and Maria did talk about wanting physical strength, right? So I, I guess maybe there's a chance of it being Mariah then. But I do feel like the premiere definitely did feel like it was setting up the Women's Alliance for success. Next week, Times vs. Rebels? That's interesting. I, 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 it'll be interesting. I mean, like, I, I think it, like, if I were to guess, I would say Rihanna. I think that'll probably be my, like, official guess. But the previews are implying Kirby. Um, which, like, Australian Survivor's not the best at keeping secrets when it comes to their previews. Um, to where I would not be shocked that it is Kirby, but I think Rihanna is, is the more likely one. How best um, to get inside. Scale the wall and... Make that jump. Kitty, I mean, like, potentially, way. but she's not like. I, I, I think it's either Kirby or Rihanna would be my top two. Kirby would probably be like a third option. I think we make the uh, finale week. How many people are finale week? What top five, right? Or is it six? Uh. Well, this is the penultimate week, right? So are we, are we at eight? We're at eight, right? So three go. Yeah, so five. five. Um. Ah, dude, that's tough. So like, oh yeah, Mark. Maybe. Gosh, yeah, I mean, like, it's just tough all around. Like, really, I don't know exactly how this season's gonna play out. Like, straight, I don't even know how Mark wins this game. I, I don't even think it, like, I get, like, just practically, I don't see it. But I just feel like edit-wise, it's all there. <laughs> um, but, like, practically, again, like, so essentially, I think, like, probably Kirby needs to go soon. And then probably Ferris goes out, like, not too long after that. Like, I would not be shocked if Kirby goes by the end of this week and then Ferris is, like, Final Four, Final Five boot. Um... Um, uh, you think Rihanna makes Final Five? I don't think so. I think Rihanna's being set up to go soon. Oh yeah, we've just gotten so much content throughout this entire post for how much of a threat she is. To her, like, considering the fact that we're literally seeing people targeting her now more recently, I feel like she's definitely gone soon. Um. Yeah, we do have a confirmed Final Two. I mean, Rihanna, Kitty, and Raymond. Because like, even Raymond's visibility spike here is simply because he had to be on the show. Um, like, it was one that was, like, absolutely necessary, necessary for it. And even then, Ferris gets most of the confessionals. Um, which is, like, really funny. Like, in this vote, in this uh, Raymond episode, that, like, Raymond gets voted out, plays the advantage. Ferris has double the amount of confessionals Raymond does. 
like I believe Raymond got five, Ferris got ten. I believe so it's something like that. It's like even then Ferris is getting like all the content for them. I don't know if Vito Valeria got fucked over bad. Uh, that was like, yeah. Uh, Valeria was like a dead man walking for a while at this point. Just that they were actually finally able to get it through. We're getting like I think Valeria goes home anyway, even if it was just a stand around gameplay. Where again, like, more than likely, like, what happens here, even if, they, like, it essentially would be a 4-4 four, four split with Kitty being the person in the middle. And again, would Kitty be willing to vote for Valeria? She literally was the previous round. <laughs> uh, so Valeria's in danger just outright anyway, and even then, like, Ferris is an idol, Ferris could just play the idol and idol out for, uh, Valeria. Like, Valeria was pretty fucked no matter what. Like, in reality, this is actually a saving grace for Valeria. This should, like, this would have been an opportunity for her to save herself if she didn't vote for Raymond. Um. Which, like, even though, like, again, at the end of the day, it's like, you never, like, there's no way you would know that this is actually what's going on. Like, I still think at the end of the day, like, still split a vote. Um. Like, what's the danger in split? Like, the fucking, like, entire, like, too far, I would be so fucking sketched out. If fucking Ferris went up to me and says, uh, Raymond, like, uh, his his last wish is that it's a unanimous vote. It's like, why? <laughs> like, why is that a thing? Uh, like, to me, that would scream out, oh, this is definitely a fucking plan. Uh, like, what is this even, like, a fucking make sure it's a unanimous vote? Um... Uh, if Anthony gets runner up again, uh, could he still move up over Kevin and Dane? Uh, I think it's tough at that point. Because I think I would want to, but I just feel like it's tough to have him as the best when he still didn't win. If Anthony gets to the end and doesn't win, I think there's something, like, for on this season, I think there's, like, uh, I don't know. It'd be kind of fucked, right? Um... In terms of like how to perceive his game, What's this? Rosa's been wounded. because at that point it's like it's just a legitimate issue. Where like the first time I could chalk it up to okay, he just didn't know the game well enough. But like this time it would be okay. This is like actually just bad. Like unless it's like a thing of like Dan in in fourteen, where like the entire jury made a pact to, or like the entire house made a pact to not award a previous winner and everything. And same with the returnees here. Um... I just feel like uh, if he doesn't win this time, it's like, yeah, it's pretty, like a pretty bad sign, I guess. Uh, then the final eight could be a kitty boot. Final seven could be. I, I, I think it's either Kirby or Rihanna. I got like so much of the previews are ba basing around Ferris and Kirby's relationship, to where I feel like it's going to be either a direct shot at Kirby or an indirect shot at Kirby through Rihanna. I, I, I don't see it being Kitty in that spot. Uh, where am I at the quiz? You'll be in fire making, Becky and Sundra. Uh, five players have in common. Dream, Sharia, Aris, Bruce, and Jamie Newton. Do something quickly. What do they have in common? I don't even know what... That's such a random grouping of people. Um, was April ever considering voting out Janelle over a vet? I don't remember. I don't think so. Because that would ruin her jury chances. But I, I don't know six, like the six feeds well enough. Um, I, I really run through all the power rankings for BBKN, but I mean, literally it's in my stream title. That I, I think Anthony should have this game unlocked. Oh, fuck off. Which, I mean, can I officially change my winner pick to Anthony? <laughs> because, like, technically that's what I did with Nicole in 18. Or, like, like my initial winner pick was, was uh, Michelle. 
was Big Meech. And then once we got the actual vets, I I, I changed it to to Nicole. For like, I feel like I should be able to do the same thing here. We're like, I, I, I'm officially picking Anthony as my winner effect. Um, like, I think that thing that's a little bit unfair here. I'm too far. I, I, I made that choice yesterday anyway. But like, obviously, I haven't been able to vocalize it until stream after we've had all the digital dailies and all that. Um, which kind of makes it a bit janky. Um, yeah, Big Meech is my winner pick up the land time, obviously. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think Anthony's the by far number one. Uh, Victoria, like, is number two just because of positioning. I have no real faith in Victoria as a player long term. But she is a bat. She is in a decent position right now. So is that something? Uh, and then, yeah, like, out of the bats, like, we just don't really have enough information. For, like, no one else outside of Anthony and Victoria are in, like, the greatest positions. Uh, especially long term. When Sri got revealed in BB25, I didn't change my number pick. Because I didn't have. Because I didn't think Sri could win. <laughs> uh, like, I wouldn't have picked. My, like, I wouldn't. Like, I actually changed it to Jared, didn't I? Um, which I guess, to be fair, actually, yeah. So, I mean, I guess that's like one where, like, it actually is the opposite. <laughs> But I guess, like, that's a situation where, though, where, like, Jared was still eligible to be picked, though. Um, or I think that's, like, the difference, right? Is that, like, I couldn't even pick Anthony before the season because, like, it, he wasn't officially announced. So the same thing with, like, Nicole. Well, with, like, Jared, Jared was eligible to be picked, and I just didn't. Uh, and I didn't change it until after we saw Suri was in there, and I was like, oh, that actually gives Jared a better chance. Um... But so like I think that's I don't really, really care <laughs> that much uh, of like if this counts or not. It's my that's my winner pick. Uh, what's the connection between Bruce, Jamie, Ara, Sharia, and Dream? Like Sharia one's like really throwing me off. We need help. Yeah, like what? The, what does Sharia have in common with them? Oh, is it occupation? Oh, are they coaches or something? Because like, I know Dreams was a cheerleading coach. Oh, for help. Then like Bruce was like. Uh, martial arts instructor, right? Straight up, I don't even know what Aris's occupation was coming in that season. Sharia, I don't know either, and then... Yeah, I don't know Jamie Newton's either, but I assume it's that then. Um, I number one in, in 46 is Maria. By a decent chunk at this point. Coaches, instructors, slash teachers, I mean... I feel like that's a lot of things you're mixing into one, but okay. Um, yeah, Terry, Rafe, Ozzy, Yao Man, and PG. What do they all have in common? So, like, it's not occupation then, right? Because, like, Terry was a, is a pilot, Rafe is a writer. I don't even know what Ozzy was at the time, but either way, uh, it's not occupation. Um, they obviously all made it far on their respective seasons. They're all Oz no, actually no, they're not all multi-time players because Rafe isn't. Who, who in 46 is no shot to win Edgic wise? Um, yeah, I think like Liz, no chance. Uh, I think Banu, no chance. I think. Like, am I ready to no chance, Kenzie? And like Soda. I don't know if I'm ready to go all out on Soda. I think Kenzie, I'm like pretty much out. Q, I'm like out, but not like a hundred percent out. Tim, I'm not a hundred percent out on Tim. Um.
Wait, let's see. I'm looking at the actual power rank. So yeah, Liz, I'm completely out. Bonu, I'm completely out. Randon? I don't think it's completely out. But I don't feel good about him, obviously. Soda, same thing. Q, same thing. I'm pretty much completely out on Kenzie, even though she's higher on the ranking. I just feel like there's so many signs here at this point that's like, I don't think it's Kenzie. Um... At the Tim, I, I, yeah, I'm not out on Tim, 100%. Ben, Ben's tough, probably not 100% though. And obviously the rest are like relatively high, so it's like maybe Mar like Mariah would be a question mark. But I think everyone else, I definitely still think can. It's screen time. To sit around and wait. Um, with Terry. Okay, so is it second highest confessional gathers? Yes, that would be the case, right? The sooner you wait them, the sooner we can strike. Yeah, okay. You see, yeah, Terry was second to Sari. Rafe was second to Stephanie. Ozzy was second to Penner, which is funny. Um,. Yao Man was second to Earl, and then PG was second to Todd, so yeah. Um, list every player of Guatemala in order of confessional count, okay. Well, that's a bit fucked, uh, to do it offhand. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, Rearranger's orange on computer? For, much for me, he's green. I think it comes down to... I believe it like comes down to, like, you can pick a color, right? But, like, if you don't, then just randomize it. I think it's something like that. Um. Okay, so do full order for Guatemala. Fuck me. Okay, so I know Stephanie's number one. I believe Stephanie's at, like, 68. I think it's the number. Um... Yeah, then I know Rafe is second. And I'll guess like... Ugh, fuck, dude. I'd guess like... 50... 1... Or so. The question is who's third? Because I think that's more interesting. Because I'm not... Because, like, Danny, I know, gets, like, an uptick at the end. So, like, I think that would have been enough to be third. But, it's like, I also feel like a lot of the other people that were booted, like, li like mid-merge or whatever, also got, like, somewhat high confessional counts. But I, I think Danny, like, I know Danny has 41. I remember that. I feel like that should be enough to be third. Um, okay, so the question is now after that. Because after that, it is, it is really fucked. Okay, well, let's just do bottom. Because I know... Like, Jim had two. I assume Morgan's super low too. I don't know how many Morgan has. If we're doing the plus or minus five thing, then like, it's gonna be I, the optimal strat pick five. <laughs> but like, uh, I think I'll like, I'll think I'll go with, like two or three for Morgan. It's not particularly high. Um, yeah, I'll go three. Who's the next lowest? So, I remember Brianna, like, actually has, like, a decent amount of confessionals, if I remember right. Where, like, she's someone that, like, you would think would be completely purple, but she actually, like, got, like, some content. Um, I know Brooke Struck. I would, I would guess Brooke Struck is the third lowest. Because who the fuck's Brooke Struck? Um, oh, wait, why am I doing this? <laughs> Is this even a viewpoint? I don't even think this is, is it? <laughs> oh, no, it is. Okay. Well, might as well do it. Um, I 
Okay, I think it just made it harder going the other way around. Uh, okay, either way, what, what was the thought? Stephanie, Wraith... Okay, there's no fucking way I'm finishing this all offhand. Um... Uh, I would guess Judd is is fourth. And I'll guess like 38 confessionals. I feel like he's like high 30s. After that though, it's tough. Like it's like, I don't remember where Cindy landed. I know Lydia's low, so I know Lydia's not anywhere close. Oh, Gary is someone that was high, wasn't he? And I remember Brandon has like a pretty high count too. I know Jamie has a low count because I remember he was like someone that like was an honorable mention. Not an honorable mention, but like he was on my like... So essentially with my like shortlist for my purple player video, I, I think I jotted down everyone that has an average of less than 1.5. And I remember Jamie was like one of those people. Mm, yeah, again, there's no fucking way I'm finishing all this. There's, like, way too much to think about uh, offhand. Um, but I, I would guess Gary, then Cindy. Then Brandon next, maybe? Or am I forgetting somebody? Alright, let's just do, like, order. Not, not including numbers. Let's just do order. Uh, did I know Sandra never was on the journey? Or yeah, I, I knew that. <laughs> um, at least, yeah, she's either winner or pre-merge. Um, and obviously, Edric thinks she, she could have been on the jury, but then she quit. Um, but, yeah, just, like, just simply going order, I think, again, Stephanie, Rafe, Danny, then Judd, then, um, fuck, who was next? Judd, then Gary, then Cindy. Then, yeah, I think at that point, it's probably Brandon, right? Because I know Lydia is low, Jamie is low. I'm, I remember Brandon had more than Bobby John. I think it's Brandon, then Bobby John. Um... And then is it Amy? I'm not sure about where Lydia lands is, is also an issue. I think I'll go Amy. Actually, how much did Brian get? I remember Margaret got a high number too, didn't she? Starting her placement. Uh, I'll go Amy, then Lydia, then Jamie. No, wait. Uh, Jamie next, or... Well, if Jamie has, like... How many episodes is Jamie in? I think that's, like, a tough thing, too. Because, like, if Jamie is only in... Because, again, he has an average of less than 1.5. So if he's in, like, 10 episodes, that means he has to have less than 15. So I think it would be Margaret, then Brian. And then... I guess then Jamie? Or is it Jamie, then Brian? I guess that's like the debate there. By the way, I felt like I left the fucking area. <laughs> uh, then after that, it's like... Who's left? I think it's Brianna then, right? I think it's Brianna next. And then... Probably Blake? Then Brooke, and then... Like, Morgan, then Jim. I think that's everybody. I think that'll be the order. Um... Scott's so Underwood play Survivor again. Do I think it'd do well? Yeah, I think he... Well, eh. I think I would have said yes before challenge. I think seeing him on the challenge kind of like reconfirms that he's a bit of a sloppy player. Oh wait, it's on the boat. God damn it. So it's like, eh. 
he, he might make a move and fuck up his own game again, but... Um, I think he would definitely have potential, though. Dare me the... Yeah, I, I remember it's... It's it's a bit much. <laughs> uh, yeah, how is Ekansu doing on... Uh, on BBUK? Well, she's pretty much the only person I, I know <laughs> on that cast. Like, her and his Sharon, Sharon Osborne, but, like, Sharon Osborne isn't even really on the cast. And, like, I could see I also, like, never, didn't even know who the fuck that was until fucking Traders. By the way, it is really funny that she literally went from filming the Traders reunion to straight going into the Big Brother house. I do find that kind of funny. Oh, fuck off. Okay. Can... Please? Please. There we go. Cool. Um, yeah, what's next? Boot War of Cook Islands from, uh, from first boot, uh, to winner. First boot to winner. So, Seiku... I'm just gonna do for, uh, like, just for Seiku. Oh, no, it says must include last names. Fuck me. Uh, Seiku Bunch, Billy Garcia, Cecilia Mancella, Mancilla. Um, uh, pff, JP Calderon, is that his last name? Uh, just trying to remember, am I missing someone? Next up will be Stephanie Favor, but I, I might be missing somebody. I don't think I am. Am I? <laughs> um, uh, I think it's easier to do winner back. I think that's like usually the way I think of it. Like doing the opposite kind of just confuses me. Because like, it's easier to keep track of numbers and everything that way. Um, good relationship with Louie and Nikita. Nikita is the uh, dancer guy, right? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna do it the other way, just because I'm just gonna do it the other way. Uh, so yeah, Yul Kwan, Ozzy Luce, uh, Becky Lee, uh, Sundra Oakley? Was that her last name? Yeah, there's no fucking way I'm pronouncing that. What the fuck is that? Like, how, how, how do you even attempt to pronounce that? Um, Adam Gentry, uh, Parley Shallow, Jonathan Penner, Candice Woodcock at the time. Uh, Nate Gonzalez, uh, Jenny Guzan Bay, uh, Rebecca Borman, uh, Brad Verita, um, uh, Jessica Flicka Smith, um, and then, okay, so that's, that'll be 13th place, right? So 14th. So I'm missing 14th, 15th. Okay, so yeah, it is right. Okay, so I, I forgot who got voted out first, Christina or or Cowboy. I think that's the because I know that it was a double boot episode. I just don't remember who got voted first. I'll guess Cowboy, Cowboy Buoy. Uh, then Christina Coria, then Stephanie Favor, and then, uh, yeah, I already said the rest, but JP Calderon, um, Cecilia Mancilla, Billy Garcia, and Seku Bunch. Um, Christina got voted out second, is that what you're saying? Perfect. Um, I feel like it actually, I probably, yeah, I do actually remember that now. You won't that cowboy was first. But, oh well. Um, 
DVD cover Guatemala. Um, Danny, Rafe, Stephanie, Judd, Bobby John, I believe, and Gary. Uh, I believe it's the other one. I believe those are six. Uh, DVD cover for Panama. DVD cover for Panama. Uh, it's is it just the final? No, no, it's the final. It's the final five, and then it's Bob Dog, right? I forgot that's what it is. Um, I believe it is Aris, Danielle, Terry, Suri, uh, Shane, and then Bob Dog, uh, because they just hate Courtney Merritt that much, I guess. Uh, I, I said this earlier, true. I think this is the best season of Australian Survivor. I think it's one of the best seasons of Survivor just in general. Um, yeah, I, I... Oh, what? Did I have no health? Uh, keep taking out Jess isn't bad for his game, just his edit. I 100% agree it's bad for his edit. Um, I would also say, again, like, game-wise, like... It depends on, like, I don't know. I think there's factors. <laughs> uh, okay, I think it's a, it's a tough decision. I think in ideal world, he would have Jess around, but it's tough to do that while also maintaining his other relationships. Uh, while also maintaining, like, tribe strength and everything. Um, like, I think in a vacuum, he should be keeping Jess around. But this isn't a vacuum, so... Um... Screwed more Michelle Yee or Jenny? I would say Michelle Yee. Because like Jenny, like, like with Jenny, it's like she was just going to go home next anyway if there was another challenge and they lost that challenge. Or Michelle, it's like she was in a, like, pretty safe position. Um, so for a while, again, she was never winning the game, so it's like, whatever. Uh, she was not going home anytime soon. It's funny how, like, those two things are essentially, like, opposing twists to a degree, right? Where, like, Michelle's is kind of like, what if there was another tribe swap? While Jenny's is essentially, like, hey, having another vote without a tribe swap or, or without another, like, change up, I guess. In the... Because, like, normally they would have merged in that spot, right? Yeah, I don't know who the fuck David Potts is. <laughs> But okay, straight up, I just don't care enough to watch BBUK at this point. Uh, it's just too much of a time commitment. Um, where the strip, like, just other shit I would rather watch. Again, right now I'm watching Wolnef's, uh, here's Villains, watch through. I'm watching Laced Up Lawrence 41, watch through. I'm watching, uh, I'm trying to watch Laser's Rebirth playthrough. Um, because I will say, like, something that is definitely a weakness of mine when playing Rebirth for myself is that I just have no memory of what was in the original game and what isn't. Uh, and I feel like that's something that's like kind of helpful. Um, I'm watching his playthrough. Uh, so yeah, like, th there's a lot there. Uh, by the way, I'm watching a lot of it also. Like, I'm watching uh, Laced Up Lauren and Will Neff streams at like 1.25 speed. And I'm watching uh, Lasers FF7 Rebirth playthrough at two times speed. Um, like I think it's top ten. I don't know if it like I don't know what other range there. Like it's not top five, but it's probably top ten. Like, it's probably, like, one of the most fluid seasons we've ever seen of Survivor. While also still maintaining, like, the fun factor of it. Or I think for me, that's kind of, like, a, a critique I have of, like, Cambodia. Is that Cambodia just doesn't feel fun. Um, despite how dynamic of a game it is. Tony... 2017 is definitely fluid too, but like I feel like there's slower points in 2017 for me at least. And again, like too fair, we're not at the end game yet. Like for all we know, this end game is like super fucking boring. Um, but I think up to this point, I think this is the better season. You 
Um, I, mean, I think there's a few, like, meh episodes. Like, I mean, the, the Jess boot episode, like, that was kind of whatever. The Nathan boot episode's also kind of whatever. Um, the, I mean, like, I, I can actually look at my review. What, re what episodes do I not have that long of notes for? Or that long of, like, uh, like, the, the script? Like, it's not really a script, but, like, whatever. The thing I used to record the review. Like, episode two's pretty short, um... Like, I, I don't have much there. Uh, episode 5 is on the shorter side of things, but it's still a good episode, though. Even though it's a non-limb. Yeah, episode 6 is on the shorter side of things. Uh, a lot of these are pretty long. Episode 9 is super long. Episode 10 is super long. Uh, episode 11, yeah, episode 11 to Alex Nonalim, that's pretty short. Um, episode 14 is short, but like, sh it's like on the short side of things, but still a really good episode. Where like, that's the, uh, fuck, which boot is that? Uh, that's the winner boot. Uh, it's well enough reacting. Here's villain. No, uh, to, he already watched Survivor US. Here's villains. I'm, yeah, but now he's watching Australian Survivor. Here's his villains. Uh, he was last night. He watched episode three. To where I don't think he's streaming Australian Survivor today. But uh, I believe by the time of next stream, he'll have watched episode seven, which is what I'm personally excited for. Like, that's the one I'm interested in seeing his reaction to, is episode 7. Okay, it's this guy. Dude, this playthrough's taking so long, though. But, like, also, whatever. It's like, I'm not, like, in a big rush to play anything, like, play other things, but still. Uh, but yeah, obviously this is me rewatching Here's the Villains, A Here's the Villains, which, um, yeah, first few episodes are kind of whatever. Uh, it's not, not a great start to the season. If I would do YouTube tiers, what would, what I add a, what do you mean by tiers? Oh, you, you mean like membership? Is that what you're talking about? Or what? Uh, do I think this game is better than Rebirth? I guess. Like, probably. Wait, how's the chest full only 698? I don't know, though. Actually, for it's, it's probably around the same caliber. <laughs> like, they're probably around the same. Where again, like, I don't think, like, Rebirth is, like, the worst game I've ever played or anything. But I just think, like, it's, like, for every step forward, there's, like, a step back. Um, which, too, I, I think this game's probably more focused than Rebirth. Well, I think that's also Chris of mine with Rebirth, is that Rebirth... Okay, fuck me. Is that Rebirth is obviously, like, the middle of the story, and through that, there's, like... Almost nothing actually happening for a lot of it. They're just going from place to place, trying to track down Sephiroth or whatever. But, like, nothing's, like, really happening. Um, to, like, it just feels like, like, structure-wise, narratively, it's a bit fucked. Because there isn't this, like, solid, like, beginning, middle, and end. Because, like, the entire story is just the middle. Um, there's still 12 questions left? Fuck, man. Um, oh yeah, yeah, challenge forty cast probably on Friday. Um, I will say probably not going to do cast reaction right away. Um, like I will probably do it. Oh, maybe by like Friday. I don't know. 
I guess it depends on like it might, maybe I'll have it out by Tuesday or something. There's a chance of that. Um, but I'm definitely not like again if it comes out on Friday, like I'm definitely not gonna have a video out on like Saturday or Sunday. Um, Only one way to find out. Try for yourself. Um, yeah, video request ideas like probably not. Like I don't know. It's like. I don't mind people like sending ideas, just that I don't want to guarantee that I'm going to do those ideas. <laughs> uh, yeah, the way that I, I currently run the channel is in a way that like I work on things like so far ahead of time. And I really hate having to work on a video that has to come out like relatively soon. Um, I'm all ears. I, I don't like like having uh, like something like yeah you know, with all the reviews and the player rankings and stuff. I don't actually enjoy uh, making them that much, especially by the end where like those have to be out like relatively quickly after I make them. Um, uh, what thoughts are there? Yeah, like who fucking cares? Like Trump's winning the primary anyway. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Like I mean, Nick Ailey already dropped out, so it's like whatever. <laughs> who cares? Um, uh, it doesn't mean anything. Uh, when I think news circle season will come out, um, not until end of the year, right? Because I, I believe they already, like, Netflix already announced the reality shows for the beginning of the year, and it's not in that. So, I believe it's not going to be until the end of the year. Like, until, like, fall or so. Like, maybe, like, late summer. I think Trump will win the election. I I, uh, I, I still think he can. Um, <laughs> uh, again, like the thing is, like Biden is so shit that I think he probably possibly can. <laughs> um, so I think if it was anybody but Biden, he was facing off against, then probably not. But I think against Biden, I think there's like maybe a chance. I mean, the primaries don't matter. Like, Biden's not facing off against anybody. People think Trump has dementia. People think Biden has dementia. Like, straight, Biden probably does have dementia. <laughs> like, I mean, Biden barely knows what the fuck he's doing. Uh, like, at least Trump can, like, string a sentence together in comparison. Like, I mean, it's like... Uh, I think if you're thinking one of the two has dementia, I think you definitely Biden has dementia. Um... I'm a Biden bitch. <laughs> uh, what's going on in the mole season two? I don't know. We'll probably, I don't know, we'll probably come out this year at some point. Um, probably towards the end of the year, I would think. I mean, is that an uncommon? Like, I mean, like, who the fuck thinks that Biden doesn't have, like, some. <laughs> Biden is clearly not, like, a uh, well performing president. He doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. Um, I get not saying that Trump is necessarily better, but, like, I mean, Biden is not good. Again, a fucking, like, 80 plus year old fucking man should not be fucking president. <laughs> um. Biden did not recover the economy. The economy was going to recover fucking anyway. Again, the president very rarely ever has any actual impact on the economy. Like, the thing is, the president, like, doesn't matter in terms of most things. Like, the president is, like, mostly just a figurehead for things. Where it's, it's Congress that has, like, most of the power for things. Like, the president is essentially just there to be a leader figure for the country. Um, where, like, most powers that the president have don't have, like, lasting impacts on things. So Trump did nothing wrong in 2020. I think he did not that much wrong in terms of the economy. Like, I actually genuinely, what do you think Trump did wrong in terms of the economy in 2020? 
Oh, yeah, Trump did stuff wrong, for sure. But what did he do wrong in terms of the economy? Uh, Trump won, 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 uh, would have won re-election if he didn't mishandle in 2020. I... Uh, I think no matter what, he was, like... No, actually, I don't think he would have won if... Uh, even without COVID. Where again, like, I think the thing is that, like, people are just fed up with Trump. Um, like, I think that's just the thing. Is that it's like, at that point, it's just, it was just such a anti-Trump sentiment. Like, I think just in general, even before COVID. That I think Trump has a tough time. Now, I do think Biden could have shown how bad he was, more so, if if it wasn't COVID times. Um, to where, like, maybe that would have harmed Biden, but I don't think it would have been, like, a Trump thing, necessarily. Um, where I think Trump already burned all of his social capital. <laughs> I don't know. It burned a lot of his, like, uh, know, favor with people by that point. Um... Could president be ranking? Okay, I'm not doing the president ranking. Um. But yeah, where are we at in the in the quiz? Uh, Jamie Dugan, Leslie, Ruth Marie. What do they have in common? Where like Jamie Dugan is the one that's like weird there, right? I, I don't think Trump's the worst president of all time. Okay, what the fuck was that? I, like, I hit, like, an invisible wall or something? Uh, who is the worst? Again, like, uh, probably, like, what, James Buchanan or one of those people, right? Andrew Johnson? Like, I think both are really bad. And Obama's not worse. Pre I don't think Obama's as good of a president as people say he is, but like he's definitely not the worst. Um, and then Bush, like, like I mean, Bush isn't great. I mean, Bush. Well, which Bush are we talking about? Both of them aren't. Well, Bush Junior is is bad toward, like, especially like towards the end. Um, like, I think he was, like, a decent leader figure initially, but then obviously he just, like, completely fucks things up. Um, once we go to war and everything. And then, uh, Bush Sr. is, like, kind of, like, a mixed one. Where it's, like, I think there's things to, like, respect from Bush Sr. nowadays. But I think at the time, uh, what he did didn't seem smart <laughs> um uh, andrew jackson's like not the worst president from a like uh it's like he's the like worst person to be president probably is he actually the worst performing president no um yeah, I get what, what's the connection between these people? Are they nurses? So would it be Suri? Is that what the connection is? I don't remember what Jamie Dugan is. I don't remember what. No, unless he's not a nurse, is she? Okay, maybe they're all not nurses. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not even sure the commonality between them. Uh, I'll, I'll just guess fucking, uh... Yeah, I'll, I'll just guess three, I don't know. Um, Earl Cole, James, Todd. And the people are Mookie, Austin Cardi, Nate Gonzalez, and Jessica DeBen.
like, what's the connective tissue? See, this is the thing I don't like about reality TV, like, connections also. The, I, I, the thing I don't like is there's just so many fucking, connect, like, so many ways that they can connect. Um, like, there's just, like, too many options of potential things that could connect these people. To where, like, regular connections, like, in general, like, the, like, the game connections. Like, it's fine, because, like, with that, it's, like, all these things have, like, specific... Oh, it's like it's like more specific the the way these things can connect or for reality tv it's like you're just listing people and then it's like there's just a billion things these people could be connected by um they're all from south carolina okay uh see like with this it's like okay they could all have like the same occupation they could all be from the same state they could all have the same voting record they could all have the same placement uh, there's like a billion different things um, that can be different about these people. Or that can be the same about these people. Um, so, like, like the, the try to predict, like, which one you're, you're thinking of is, is like, the fuck thing. Whereas, like, again, like, with the connections, like, okay, there's, like, essentially one specific thing. Where, like, with this, there's, like, a billion things that it can be. Um... Worst AU season, Blood vs. Water. I don't think it's even close. I think rewatching Blood vs. Water and Will Neff Stream like made it even more obvious. Yeah, Blood vs. Water is so shit, dude. Um, where like it was like even like watching Will Neff watch Blood vs. Water was so fucking boring. I really did not give a shit. Um, I like Champs Connectors one over two. Okay, is is he gonna die? I think he's gonna die, isn't he? Uh, Dude, fuck this mission. This is the, one of the worst missions in Assassin's Creed. By the way, I'm still gonna do the daily run for Last of Us tonight. Because I haven't done it yet. And I'm probably not gonna find time to do it tomorrow if I don't do it now. Yeah, like, pretty much, like, all the blue tribe is, is like, Flushing Khan's idol. Then almost all the red tribe is just Sandra. Uh, like, seeing Queen stays Queen, all that bullshit. So it's like, yeah. I think gameplay, um... Ah, what, had idols? Uh... uh It's like at that point, I guess it's Mookie, right? If that is the answer, at least. But super, like, I guess, like, is it found idols? I guess would probably be the better way to phrase it. He's like Todd had an idol, but then just like gave it away right away to fucking James. So it's like, um, yeah, okay, just kill me. Uh, how many days in a row have I done daily runs since uh, January 29th? I believe was the first day I did it. But I've done it every day since then. Um, which, yeah, I intend on doing it every day. Watch my midseason power ranking. Uh, like I said, Australian... I think the, I said the current state of Australian survivors is better than the current state of Survivor US. Um, I not the show in general. But I think where Survivor Australian Survivor is right now is better than where Survivor US is right now. What do I get for it? What do you mean what do I get for it? Nothing. I just play it every day. Uh, I, I legitimately love playing No Return. I wish I had like more time to actually properly play it. Because I would probably play it like a ridiculous amount if I actually had the time to. But I don't. <laughs> um, but again, 30 minutes a day is like tolerable though. Even then though, I do find it kind of annoying where like I could be playing... Like, spending those 30 minutes on Rebirth. But, again, I don't want to miss a daily run. Uh, don't know how to tie a, tie, uh, tie a knot anymore? How? How do you not know how to tie a knot anymore? Uh, like, what'd you forget about it? 
Anyway, next question. Michelle Yi, Stephanie Favor, Brooke Strzok. Mm. I was going to say first beats after swap, but that's not the case. Stephanie isn't. And I guess Michelle Yi's not technically a swap. Is your right a no sleep superpower? Uh, Will you end up working on videos anyway? Probably. <laughs> Well, working on videos slash playing video games, probably. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that'll probably just be what I do. Like, right now, I think I'd probably just be going all in on the Australian Survivor review. To be fair, like, if I, if I had no sleep, I would probably, like, structure my days differently. Um... It's kind of the way I, sh like, structure what I do when I do. It's kind of based around the concept of, obviously, like, I have to sleep. <laughs> um, occupation? I don't know what... Oh, well, oh, okay, well, Brooke Struck was a law, law student, right? So, this were the other two students? Then who is a student? Uh, actually, is it Brian or is it Blake? It's one of the two. I would guess Brian was a student. Uh, Ray Ranger's green again. Yeah, he's green on my screen. He's green on both of my screens. Just different type of green. Jenny Guzan Bay or Jenny Kim? Uh, I mean, we just saw so little Jenny Kim. But I feel like I would go Jenny Guzan Bay. Um, what's next? Melissa Hyder, Bob, uh, well, Bob Dog, Courtney Merritt. Um,. Well, okay. Is it Austin? No, 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 no. Is it Dan? Oh, no. Machine would be the same thing. Shit. Um, okay, how... Okay, yeah, what would it be? Oh, is it first... Wait, no. That doesn't work either. I was going to say first boots from their starting tribes, but that doesn't fully work. At least with Courtney Merritt, it doesn't work. Actually, no, even with Melinda, it doesn't work because because of Timbertina. Dude, this mission sucks. I guess I'm done with this one already. Uh, this entire section of the game sucks. Like, fuck Venice in this game. Uh, is Kiefer overrated player? I mean, how are people rating him? I think he's... Properly rated for the most part, but also I'm not seeing people that are saying that he's just like a best player of all time candidate. Uh, like he's a good, like he's good. Like I mean, again, like debatably best player BB Can Nine again, probably tie above him, but like not by that much. Um, but I would not assess him like super highly. <laughs> Like, he's not, like, again, he's not Dean and Anthony and that sort of thing, but he's, and like, around, like, uh, the Brunos of the world, I guess. I forgot, where was he on my, uh, on my ranking? He was better than Ty for you. Um, horrible dream manager. I, I think, yeah. I, I mean, I would agree with that sentiment. I don't know if that's enough to have him as, uh, as a uh, higher though for me I think tribes I mean that's what I was saying like so like Melinda was on the older women Bob dog was on the younger men Courtney was on the younger women so like my initial instinct was okay it's it's the younger or so like it would have to be older men because that's the only tribe that hasn't been said yet um but then Shane and Dan are both from the older men. So it's like, which one would it be then? And again, my, then my first instinct was like first boots from that, but that's not the case. Um, can't even be second boots. Oh, wait, is it oldest person? No, because like Melinda's not the oldest person on the cast, right? Yeah, she's the youngest. Well, Bob Dog is the oldest. 
I think Courtney's probably the oldest woman. So is it the youngest of the young men? So it would be Shane. Wow, that's a, I mean, I assume that's the answer, but again, that's a lot. <laughs> um. I got lucky not get targeted over. I don't know if he got. Well, I don't know if he got lucky in that instance. I think he got lucky earlier on, in that like people were targeting him and they just like the specific, like uh, those specific people didn't win the comps. How we miss this? What? What is this? Top ten best Big Brother contestants of all time. Of all the top images. Fucking Derek. Uh, Dan at one. Okay. Two will. Sure. <laughs> Brittany three. Obviously. Cody Califure. I love how like it's a serious list. But then has fucking Brittany at three. And Cody at four. Like it's like. It's weird where it's like. It seems like a gameplay list. But then Brittany's at three. Um, but then you see Janelle at five also. And it's like okay. Uh, Derek at six. Daniel Reyes at seven. Vanessa at eight. Tyler at 9, Ian at 10. That's also egregious, but whatever. Um, they're all on Swap Kasaya? Oh, okay. I, I guess. Uh, I mean, that, uh, uh, that was like way simpler than I thought it would be. Okay. Um, The production, BB Camp production didn't like that tie one. No, I think they're fine with it. Which tie are we talking about? Like, 11 or 9? Either way, both, I think they're fine with it. Um, I think they're more fine with 11. But I think they're... Like, I think on 9, I think they would have probably preferred a Kiefer win. But I think they're fine with a tie win. Especially considering tie was, like, the first black winner and everything. Um... 11? I think they're fine with tie from 11. Especially over Claudia. Like, maybe they would have preferred a Daniel win. But, I, I think they're... And, like, I think they definitely would have preferred, like, a Koozie win. But, like, I think all the, like, the options at the end, I think they were definitely okay with a tie win. By the way, that threw me off guard. The fucking Daniel just randomly showing up in this episode. I was not expecting to see Daniel. <laughs> um, or like, I, I literally was even like watching at the like when we came back from commercial break, and all of a sudden Daniel was there. I was like, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> um, like that was so random. Eight questions. There's still that many. Fuck me, dude. Uh, Gary Hogaboom, Bruce Penner. I assume it's oldest person. Or all this guy? No, actually, no, that wouldn't be the case. With Guatemala, at least. Uh, is that, the, I don't even know, is that even the case of Penner? Actually, no, they're all 7th place, too, aren't they? So is that it? Which, that would be Alex. Um, DVD cover for Cook Islands. Um... Uh, Okay, so you, Ozzy, obviously. I'm pretty sure Penner. I'm pretty sure Parvati. And then after, I actually don't think I know. Because it's like... Like, is Candace on it? I don't remember when it was... Like, I... Because, obviously, like, the thing with the DVD covers that they typically like to include... Um... People that later come back. But I don't know if... I think that was before... Um... Here's the villains. Like, obviously, the easy answer would be Becky and Sundra, but I don't know. I don't remember if they were on it or not. <laughs> um... Whatever. Fiji, um... 
All right, so Fiji would be Earl. I think it would just be the top four. And I think Alex is there. And then... Who is the other one? This way. I'm impressed. I didn't expect you to succeed so quickly. Is it? Wait. Please. I'll let Antonio Who's know the other one? Progress. Come find me later. I've got another job for you. What sort of job? Meet me near the docks. I don't think explain. Boo is there, the right? Is Boo there? I don't think so. But I don't think Stacy is there. Is it Michelle Yi? I think it could be Michelle Yi. I think it is. Because it's like, I think I remember her image on there. Because I, I'm pretty sure it's not Boo. And like, Stacy would be really random. Which I'm too far Michelle Yee is also random, but like, kind of a different type of random. Um, of rank these players good. Michelle Chase, Fitzgerald, Schubert, uh, Tersuro, whatever, however you pronounce that, and uh, Yee. I mean, number one would obviously be Fitzgerald, two is probably Schubert, three is probably Yee, then uh, Tersuro, then Chase. Uh, DVD cover for China. Um, I think it's top five plus James. Right? Yeah, I think that's the case there. It's top five plus James. Uh, who voted for who at Tribal Council where Mookie was voted out? Okay, I don't know who was on the split. Uh, on what side of the split. Obviously, Alex voted for... Uh, Mookie, uh, Mookie voted for Boo, and after that, I have no fucking clue who voted for Alex, who voted for Mookie. Obviously, it was a 4-3-1. Uh, Hunter, Gabler, Brad, race camping trip would be epic. Uh, would it? Um, I feel like that would be just kind of disturbing. Um... <laughs> uh, But I do love him. Oh, fuck off. Okay, cool. <laughs> but I, I do feel like Hunter at this point is kind of reminding me of Tommy. Oh, fuck off. Uh, but it's reminding me of Tommy. Not, like, edit-wise necessarily, but more so just, like, like game-wise. Uh, and, like, also the fact that he's, like, a, a fucking uh, teacher and everything. Th thoughts on the song battle tonight for 46? That was 100% just there because of the two hour episode. Uh, Virgin Eric's on the cover. Is he on the cover? Is he? Wait, who's not there? Is it not Denise then? I'm gonna look this up. Wait. Like, who's not there then? Because, like, James is definitely there. It's so, like, who's n who from the top six isn't there then? Okay, where's my DVD cover thing? There it is. Uh... Oh, yeah, Eric is there. Who's the person missing? Oh, yeah, Denise isn't there. Interesting. I just assumed Denise would be there. Uh... Maybe the reunion kicked her off the cover. Um... <laughs> uh... Allowing on my Twitch clips for 10 minutes. Yeah, I, I did end up clipping a few more things since last stream. Where, like, I mean, to be fair, one of them was already a clip. It's just that, like, the go hard one. But that was one that, like, Menace clipped. But then, like, it bothered me that his clip was, like, 30 seconds. Where, like, it, really the only important part of it is, like, a 10 second portion of it. So I just re clipped it myself. Um, then, yeah, I had to clip the, that thing from the AC2 stream from. Was it last stream or two streams ago? I guess it would have been last stream. Where um, I said I'm making like slow progress. Then immediately the game said uh, you're making fine progress. Uh, which that was funny. <laughs> and then what was the other clip that I did since last stream? I think there were three, weren't there? Oh, I, I, I decided to upload the, uh, the clip of I'm a Flat Earther. <laughs> 
because we talked about that last stream. So I was like, yeah, whatever. I'll, I might as well just upload it. It'll only take like two seconds. Um, so, and by two seconds, I mean probably like ten minutes actually, but like still, not that long. I was like, whatever. I'll, I'll upload it because like, sure. I I like to go back and watch clips uh, at points. Um, so I'm like, eh, just for like easy access, I guess I'll, I'll upload this here. Uh, it's totally the worst. I'm at the right the beginning of the season. I, if he goes home, probably. <laughs> but it's like, we barely know anything about this season at this point. Like, we literally don't even have like a full grasp of the landscape of the game at this point. Uh, the like UK would make a celebrity trader season. It wouldn't shock me, but then they already confirmed they're not. But I think I would would have assumed that they were going to. Uh, has anything good ever happened on a camping trip? I mean, I've never been on a camping trip, so I wouldn't know. Um. <laughs> uh, yeah. What's the next question? Uh. Who voted for who at the Trouble Council where Candace Woodcock went home? Um, well, the five... So, I mean, Becky, Sundra, Yule, Ozzy, Penner, all vote Candace. And then... Penner... Or not Penner. Uh, Candace, Parvati, Adam vote Penner. Um, list every rookie from this set of seasons that would return in a future season? Which means we'll need the armor that they wear. Wait, what? Oh, okay, wait. So where do five... It's 11 through 15? So just every returning player? Is that what, what this is? Um, it's like Danny Boatwright returns for Winners at War. Um, what else is there? Uh, so, like, Stephanie returns for Heroes versus Villains. I'm pretty sure that's it for Guatemala, right? Uh, Panama, you have Aris returns for Blood vs. Water. Danny De Lorenzo, Danielle, why do you say Danny? Danielle De Lorenzo uh, returns for Here's Villains. Uh, Terry Dietz returns for Second Chance. Suri Fields returns for Here's Villains and Game Changers. Is that it for that cast? I think it is, right? Yeah. Um,. Cook Islands, uh, Yule returns for Winners at War, Ozzy returns for Micronesia, South Pacific, and uh, Game Changers. Uh, Parvati returns for Micronesia and Heroes Villains and Winners at War. Um, almost forgot she was on Winners at War. Um, Penner returns for Micronesia and Philippines. Uh, Candace returns for Here's Villains of Blood vs. Water. I think that's it there. Uh, who's, what's next? Fiji, uh, it's just Yao Man, right? Yao Man returns for Micronesia. And then China, it's Courtney returns for Here's Villains. Amanda returns for Micronesia and Here's Villains. James returns for Micronesia and Here's Villains. PJ returns for Second Chance. And I think that's it. So, yeah. Um, first for the ending of Rebirth. I I have a bit of a modified theory at this point, which I think I talked about in one of the Let's Play episodes. But, so, I think at this point, it's, okay, minor spoilers for, for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Again, I'm at the, around the halfway point in the game. Um, like, really, it's not even, it's, it simply things that you could pick up on early on anyway. I, so like, Cloud is clearly Zack, right? Um, like, like what I'm thinking, like, okay, I, I, I don't know what's going on fully, but Cloud, like, I, what I'm wondering now, is this like an inverse of like, Zack now thinks he's Cloud? Or something like because like in the original it's like it's like Zach or so Cloud like think is like 
Okay, wait, wait. It's like, Cloud has, like, Zack's memories, right? And it's, like, remembering himself... Okay, spoiler for original Final Fantasy VII. But it's, like, remembering his... Like, Zack's memories as his own. Is this, like, the inverse? Because, like, again, like... Cloud is clearly Zack. Um, like, when Cloud is alone, like, about to go to sleep and everything, he does, like, the Zack exercises and everything. Like, he is Zack. Um... But it's like... I don't, like, fully get the con And, like, the thing is, like, whenever he goes to sleep, he goes to the Zack timeline. Um... Like, he dreams of the Zack timeline. Where you play as Zack. Like, I think... Like, that's kind of why I'm thinking it's something to that nature. I don't know exactly the... Like, like I, I just don't know exactly what it is. But clearly, like, that is a thing, though. Is that this is, like... This is Zack. <laughs> Um, like that Zack is involved, like actually like involved in this timeline. I just don't get how it's fully connected. Leo, I see you later, uh, biggest party. Uh, yeah, I did hear Power Game that are going to redo it for whatever reason. I guess there was like a controversy with a certain player the first time around where like they were like, fuck it, we got to redo it. I guess that seems really stupid though. Um, but yeah, what, what was the final question? Boot or Fiji? Oh, that's easy. Then can I do first and last name for Fiji anymore? Let's see. Earl Cole, Cassandra Morris? No, wait. Cassandra... No, Cassandra Morris is Cassandra... Um... Wait, no. Is Cassandra Morris... Okay. I'm just going to give up on this one. It... Who's Cassandra Morris? Someone is Cassandra Morris. Yeah, Cassandra Franklin. Cassandra Morris is Cassandra from BB Can, isn't it? That's her married name, I think, right? Yeah, okay, yeah, that's who Cassandra Morris is. Um, it's Cassandra from BB Can 4 and 5. Um, yeah, Cassandra Franklin. But, um, Dreams Heard. Uh, fourth place was Yao Man Chan. Uh, Boo Burness. Um, Stacy Kimmel. Kimball? Something like that, right? Um, Then Alex Angarita, Mookie Lee, uh, Edgardo Rivera, uh, Michelle Yi, uh, Lisi Linares, Rocky Reed, or James Reed if you want to go real name. Um, Oh, again, straight up. I, I think what they're doing is bad <laughs> with Rebirth. I'm just still, like, interested in seeing what they actually are doing, though. Um, like, 100%, these timelines are going to combine in some way. Uh, it's just a matter of, like, how. Um... And again, it is strange how, like, again, there's, like, a lot of, like, red flags with, like, the actual, like, the the clouds timeline that makes me feel like that's not real. <laughs> um, so, like, I mean, I think another question is, like, what if this is Zack in the live stream after his death? Now living clouds' memories... But also then, like, what the fuck is the is the Zack timeline then? I don't know. Uh, UK... So UK actually stopped casting. Unless they started again recently. Uh, they, they, they had stopped casting. Which makes me think we're probably not getting a season two. <laughs> so yeah, it never got properly renewed. Uh, what's going on, BB Can 12? I mean, Anthony's winning. 
Uh, that's what's happening. Uh, yeah, I want to finish this Fiji thing. Where was I on Fiji? Uh, it's Rocky, right? Rob, uh, Anthony Robinson. Uh, Vita, or Vita, Rita Vero? What's her last name? It starts with a V. Whatever, Rita. Um, then what? Is that Liliana right there? Liliana Gomez. Gary. I don't fucking remember Papa Smurf's last name. I know it starts with an S. Um, and then what? Sylvia Kwan. Uh, Eric. I, I, Erica. I could not even pronounce her last name even if I like fully knew it. Uh, Doro, Dorosho, Dorosho, some whatever it is, starts with a D. Uh, then just get the Ben. Um, Stir, Stir Kesky? <laughs> whatever. Uh, I feel like if it's Anthony and Spicy V Final 2, uh, Vic Wins probably the pro jury. I would probably agree as of right now. Um, this area is nothing for you. Think you can behave as you would in your own little back. Where, like, I think, again, like, obviously the women would do seem to want a, a female winner this season. Where, uh, yeah, that would not shock me. But also, it's like, I, I feel like Anthony, like, knowing Anthony, and again, knowing that he now knows the game better, I think is going to make strives to undercut her along the way. And yeah, it's, it's still a long game. For a while, yeah, I think he probably has like an initial disadvantage against Victoria. Um, it also would not like fully shock me if he like he like builds another top, like he, he builds another like um, like top person, whatever. Like essentially, like I, I think like I would not shock me if he's at the point where like he would cut Dane for Kira um, if he's in that spot. Where, like, obviously, at the time, like, at the time, BB can 7, like, obviously, he's taking Dane every time. But, like, now with him knowing the game better and everything, I, I do feel like there's definitely a shot that he, like, Cody Calafiore's this. Um, and has a bit more of a killer instinct in that light. I'm still in the boat, right? That's what I'm doing right now. Okay, cool. That's definitely what I want to do. Please, I'm I'm literally hitting the thing. Okay, cool. Yep, I definitely want to do that. Why does the game feel more broken now? <laughs> uh, whatever. Anthony will ruin BB Can's reputation for female winners. I mean, it's already been ruined. <laughs> Uh, like it's it, yeah, we've had four, like we've already had like a long string of male winners. Uh, it's not like one more is gonna be this like big thing of like, oh my god, it's four, it's five instead of four. I mean, that is insane though. Yeah, last woman to win is is Paris, which was what in like twenty, uh, what was that in, like twenty eighteen? Like essentially, there hasn't been a female winner of of. BB can since I started the channel, which is insane. Yeah, I guess yeah. That, that even extends to yeah since season three. Uh, like Paris is the only winner. So yeah, that that is pretty insane. That's the case. Should I buy a new weapon? I guess I might as well, right? Oh, I guess I should buy armor, too. Actually, do I want to buy armor? Am I going to do armor Voltaire? Probably not, right? Um, that's better, right? Oh, no, wait. I'm an idiot. All these are yeah, the same armor. Um, what's the best weapon? I can't. Oh, wait. Can I sell something? Can you sell things in this game? I don't even remember, actually. Can you sell things in AC2? I don't think you can, can you? 
whatever. Uh, better be able to one if Josh was an idiot. Um, yeah, probably. Yeah. If it's better than Josh, then yeah. Um, one season a woman, one by accident. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that, that's also a thing. Um, yeah, actually, that, that is insane that the only, like, actually, like, kind of competent uh, female winner is, is Paris. <laughs> Uh, that, that is kind of insane when you think about it. That, like, the other two female winners had the win due to, like, complete luck. I, I felt like that gate, like, I felt like health didn't even go up that much. I mean, we did, actually, no, we only had, like, six, didn't we? Okay, maybe we did go up a lot. No, Cody's better as a runner. I mean, not Cody. Fuck me. Anthony's way better as a runner-up than than Cody. Your good work has restored us to our former strength. Like, if Anthony wins this season, I think he's actually. I don't know. I I think it's tough because, like, at least Cody won against a cast of like returning players. Like, this is Anthony being given a lot of advantages and like winning over a newbie cast. If Venus uh, invited me to a local part, uh, a watch party in the local area where I attend, I mean, obviously. I'll do anything for Venus. Uh, in reality, I don't know, maybe. I feel like I wouldn't want to go to a watch party, though, straight up. Because I feel like you barely get to even properly watch the episode if you're at a watch party. Also, considering, like, for me, it's like, well, then I just have to fucking rewatch the episode again anyway, because I have to take notes on it anyway. <laughs> By the way, I, I love how, like, I had six pages of notes for for episode one. I don't even, like, I didn't even see how many I had for episode two. Not so wet, anyway. Let's see, what do I have for episode two? Yeah, another six pages. I have 12 pages of notes already for this season. Well, 11 and a half. Like, technically, the last page is only half full. But that's going to be fun. <laughs> um... Yeah. More than likely, you would assume that this would be my... Like, it would probably break my new longest Survivor review, right? Also, I don't know how long the, the Australian Survivor review is going to be. What the fuck? Uh, sure. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I don't know how long the, uh, the Australian Survivor review is going to be. Where it's actually on pace to, like, not be ridiculously long. Like, it's long. It's still going to be, like, three hours. But, like, I kind of assumed it would actually be more. Um, to where, like, my... Uh, here's the villains one. It's, like, what, two hours, 50 minutes or something to that nature? Um, like, it, like, this one's pretty much on pace to be around the same. Which, again, I, I was just assuming it would be longer. Uh, prediction on week one? I mean, like, Tola goes home if he doesn't win Vito. If he wins Vito, then, like, again, Janine, or maybe even, like... Actually, I don't know, again, it, it's tough, because it's like, Anthony's just in a tough spot where, like, there's just not many options. Because, like, obviously, like, Matthew's someone they talked about potentially targeting, but, like, again, I, I think with Anthony... Like, I, I don't know if Matt is someone he should be targeting right now. I mean, sure, he probably shouldn't even be targeting Tola. Like, ideally, he probably just targets Janine. Yeah, he's like, yeah, if he has an alliance with Avery and, and Kayla, he already put up Janine and Tola. Then the other two options are Todd and Matthew, both of which not being great.
But I guess like Matt is the one that he has like less plans to work through long term. One, Vivek's on his, like, on his team, so I can't go for Vivek. But also, I believe they're in a better standing now, aren't they? So I think of the men, I believe, like, Vivek is, like, one of the more safe people in Anthony's eyes. By the way, Elijah's still a person too. Which I, I keep forgetting Elijah's there. Uh, yeah, but he can't target uh, Dennis though. Dennis is on his team. As I said, like I, his targets Tola or Janine, one of the two. But it's like, um, ah, but we're talking about this week, aren't we? Um. I mean, the thing is, like, with Anthony, I think that's probably the one, like, hesitancy with, with Anthony. Is that, like, Anthony seems to be making all these relationships with the women. But, like, they all have, like, connective tissue within themselves, too. To where it's, like, for him, he should be trying to gather the men. But he seems to, like, not be trusting many of the men. Oh, we're at this point already. Right. Well done, Ezio. Everything is going according to plan. As we speak, my men are replacing the archers who like, The thing is also like where the fuck is Elijah in the game though? Because I generally just have no clue where Elijah is in the game. Use my men. They can distract the guards. Save you from having to fight. Yeah, I know he's goose, but like like does he have any alliances? Like, who is he even close to? We await word of your success. At least, at least with these other people, it's like, I, I know that, like, Vivek and Matt have a final two, and, like, I don't know, like, there's these other, like, connective tissue, like, between people, but, like, I have no clue anything about what Elijah's doing in the game. I just know he's not, like, a target for anybody. Nothing here. Hey! Okay. Yeah, it's not gonna work, is it? Oh, fuck off. You know, I think what we're gonna do, we're just gonna finish the sequence and I think we'll move on to no return. Even though technically I would want to play, like, get more done in this game, I, I don't think I care enough to play more of this game tonight. Uh, I think I'm good. So I think we'll go to no return. And play that for like an hour or so. Four and stream. Um, sure, but I'm already on the tired side of things. But whatever. The thing that's been annoying recently is that I've been like getting tired earlier, but then I've also just like not like gone to sleep though. Um, there's like despite me being tired, I still have like not been able to actually fall asleep. It's just been annoying. Like, that's why, like, last few nights, like, I, I haven't been playing that much of Rebirth because I, I've been getting, like, tired after, like, an hour. Only for me to then, like, not even be able to go to sleep anyway. Also, Daylight Savings Times this weekend, so I'm gonna be so fucked. Oh, I just realized that's gonna even fuck me up even more. I mean, I have to get up early on, on Monday anyway. But I just realized it's gonna be, like, plus Daylight Savings Time. <laughs> Uh, fuck me. Does Vossero count as a PLC? No. In what way? He's Italian. It's pretty much as white as he could be, isn't he? Uh, where is he at? Oh, shit. Nah, fuck. Okay, I fucked that up. I almost had it. Oh, fuck! <laughs> cool. Uh... 
Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, again, Trace Season 2 sucks now. First half is great. Second half sucks. Like, I think even UK is possibly better than US Season 2 at this point. Oh, wait, fuck off. I had this stuff from the beginning. I just realized that. God damn it. Yeah, like Titans vs. Rebels is number one by a lot. To where like I, I, I think it'll probably just be the best season of the year, probably. Like unless Survivor US just like genuinely surprised me, or like unless obviously like BB. Uh... Okay, cool. Um... Yeah, unless uh... actually, wait, can I just go through the front? Oh, I can't. Okay, never mind. Let's say like, why, why can't I just go through the front? But yeah, unless like BBUS or, or like Survivor 46, and, like really like 46 so far just seems fine. Um, uh, if, uh, like I think sur the two Survivor seasons and Big Brother are probably the only things that could probably be Australian Survivor at this point. Like I think even if like some of these other shows are like as good as they possibly can be, I still think even then they're not better than Titans vs. Rebels. Or I, I, I Titans vs. Rebel has just been like an incredible season. Oh, cool! Hit the wrong button. Oh, uh, Kasaya went to second try. I assume tr second try will have the team who goes home. You don't know. Potentially three, but you never know. Why? Is he He's been here for weeks. How could you be so blind? Unlike you, I've been busy. You know, even if it would have been Sri to begin with, like who knows what she's able to do to stop that. Where again, she was supposed to be the boot initially on the first row. What is it you want, Carlo? Maestro has called the meeting. Three days from now at Santos Picardo. Very well. I'll be there. Assuming you still live. If you want my advice, I'd find a less conspicuous place to go. Sure. Set eyes on that was kind of stupid. Uh, how good is Hannah from UK? What, what do you mean, how good is Hannah? <laughs> Where is he? Is that him there? Oh, it is. Okay. I feel like there was like proper stealth in this game. Um, does her as a player? I think she's bad. Oh, what the fuck? How did I get detected there? Like genuinely as a player, I think she's really bad. I think her game is better than her as a player. Do not be afraid. I feel no fear, assassin. Or yeah, at least her game is her getting to the end with like a winning scenario. But I think genuinely she's really bad. To where like she pretty much gets away like what once the entire season. Um, or at least I agree with her just like decision making once throughout the entire season. Uh, seeing the worst Panama player. Probably. Uh, like, I mean, she's not even that, that bad, though. Sorry, I couldn't resist. I just want to look this up where I ended my last Come, playthrough. Let's open the gate for Antonio. Um, where is it? Wasn't the gate open a second ago? Didn't, like, guards literally just come through it, but whatever. Um... Let's Go. see, where yeah, is my... Oh, wait, I'm on the wrong channel. God damn, I went to my Let's Play channel, not my VOD channel. Tell Ezio. How can I repay you? 
for your service. Okay, where do I start off? Easy enough. Oh, I, I start off in the same spot. Okay. What is? Huh. Was meeting with I thought I made it further. Maybe, maybe I'm just on pace with that last playthrough. Carlo Grimaldi. He sits on the Council of Ten. Why do you ask? Okay, you that's fine. I have a meeting to attend. Why do I have two? I have two tabs of my own stream open. Why do I? Why do I have this? Oh, uh, whatever. You're so frustrated. Why? What happened? All oh, Kirby's allies are gone except for Rihanna. Yeah, uh, that is the case. To be fair, some of them at her own doing. I guess not really. I guess it's just Valeria. Uh, I am. I'm not making an all-star battle respected. I maybe will at some uh, at some point. Uh, at some point in my life. <laughs> Anytime soon? No, but like, I don't know, ten years from now, potentially. Watch me when I'm like almost forty. I'm fucking making a fucking <laughs> all-star battle retrospective. Imagine I'm still doing this when I'm almost 40. That'll be funny. Um, okay, maybe we'll play a little bit more, I guess. We're on, we're still only th not even three and a half hours in. I guess I'll start off this section. Oh, and now I think about it, I think we are behind still the last playthrough. Because, like, last playthrough I started at the actual carnival. Emmy from Spies Like That is only 25. Well, that makes me f fucking old. Like, it is weird that, like, I've gotten to the point where, like, a good chunk of reality TV people are, are younger than me. Like, even the Survivor cast. Uh, let's see. Who, who's younger than me on the Survivor cast? I think, like, a decent chunk. Uh, let's see. So, Jelinski, Tevin, Venus, Charlie. Soda is probably the same age. Concerning this film last year. Let's see. Or is that, like, her age now? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm a year older than Soda. So I'm the same age as like Hunter, Mariah, and then like everyone else is older. But, but like Kenzie and Q are only like a year older. Um, even like Ben and like Tim are only like three years older than me. That that's pretty insane uh, to think about for me. Actually, it's kind of insane that Jess is like one of the oldest people in this cast. That like didn't really even register for me. Uh, so it's fucking annoying. I I like both of them as TV presences, at least. Like Soda and Banu. Uh, replace Steven Fishback for know-it-alls? Obviously. I'm sure that's exactly what Rob wants. It's for this random person that he doesn't even know to replace Steven Fishback. Um... What does it mean? I told him oh, fuck you. off. We have the fucking well, tailing mission. Yes, I forgot about the tailing mission. That you don't trust me. As am I. Wait, no, I'm an idiot. Wait, no, there's an entire Perhaps sequence so before I'm Carnival, eh? Well, Wait, yeah, so I'm not even there yet. Okay, I'm just being dumb. There's an entire sequence I have to do. <laughs> Yeah, because you have the car, you have the flying machine stuff and everything, and then you have oh fuck off. Okay, I guess we're actually pretty far behind. I've tried to lay the groundwork, making suggestions, but he has other voices at his ears. Then you must work hard. Whatever, we'll do at least this mission. I think we'll play until like the three-hour, like forty-five-minute mark or so. I don't know. He just the Doge doesn't like me. And then, uh, we'll move on to No Return. Or maybe we'll play until 3am, I think. 
Which is in... Gosh, fuck, it's still the means I'm gonna end at like 4 a.m. Uh, whatever. Straight up, I think if, like, if I die right away and no return, I just think I'll, like... Maybe just, like, not continue after I don't know, we'll see. The only reason I would continue, though, is, like, because it would bother me to upload, like, a 10-minute VOD onto... Onto the VOD channel. Yeah, obviously I already fucked this up. Wow, okay, how the fuck did I get through that? Done. You listen to me now. I remember when I was a kid, this was like the most brutal mission. Like this this mission took me forever to fucking finish. It's like a mission I would always be like scared of when playing AC uh uh, AC2. Because I would play the game over and over again. When, like, in reality, it's actually, like, pretty fucking easy if you're, like, paying attention. I just wonder, who on uh, Battle for a New Champion is older than me, though? Because I feel like not actually that many. Like, not as many as you would think. I mean, like, you would think Challenge would be a show that skews younger. Yeah, I feel like recently they just haven't. So I feel like, like most people on Challenge are like essentially my age or older. Even though like back in the day they used to be like early 20s. Ah, oh, fuck. They don't have ages next to these people. What? I, I feel like Emmanuel's probably younger than me though. How old is Emmanuel? The same one who hunted down the Pats. Like, I, I would guess he's, like, around my age, but I wouldn't be shocked if he's... Yeah, he's, like, a year younger, so... But, yeah, like, I'm... Like, Corey Lay is older, Jay is definitely older, Locke... James Locke is definitely older, Horacio's younger, I'm pretty sure, Kylan's older, Ed is older, Asaf is older, Callum? How old is Callum? Callum's slightly older. Kieran? How old is Kieran? Uh, Kieran's older. Chauncey, I know, is younger. Okay, I'm about to fail this. How does Huey? I assume Huey's older. I would assume Huey's like 30, right? How old is Huey? 29? Yeah, okay. So he's older. Shit, okay. Yeah, what? Well, Norris, I know, is older. I believe Colleen is the same age, I believe. Berna, I, I think is older. Mariah is younger. Olivia is older. Michelle is older. Zara might be the same. How old is Zara actually? But Raven's younger. Melissa is older. Big T is older. Hui Hui is older, right? She's like thirty, right? And Jessica, I believe, is older. Um, how old is Zara? Oh, she's 30. Okay, yeah, so she's older. Uh, if BB-12 had two captain returnees, who would they be? You can't af answer Jeff and Jordan? Well, that's probably the fucking answer, though. <laughs> oh, to be fair, it probably would be Jeff. If it was a captain season, it'd probably be, like, Jeff and, like, Dick or something. Well, I think those would be like their two top priorities, I think. Or like chat well. Maybe they wouldn't want a winner though, if they're doing like Jeff. Yeah, maybe just Dick and Danielle would be funny. Oh dude, they love Dick. Like Dick was like super close to production and everything. And he burned it, all of his relationships, like, since then. But, like, at the time, though, uh, like, Dick was, like, super, super popular. Uh, 
Perhaps not as much as he deserves. He said, but like Dick was like a massive lock for returning season at the time, for whenever it happened. Enough with your inane prattle. The choice of Dodger was never up to any of you, and you were never given. Ideal picks would have been Libra and Jesse. Yeah, but Libra's never coming back though. Uh, and like Jesse literally just came back for eleven. But again, Jeff would be locked. Like, Jeff, 100% coming back, and then probably, yeah, Dick would be the next, most likely, returning at that point. Like, if, if 12 was All-Stars, like, who would be on the cast? Like, it would be, like, Jeff... Um, to be honest, I don't even think Jordan is there. He's like, Jordan only came back for 13 because she kind of had to to give Jeff the chance. Because if she didn't come back for 13, then Jeff wouldn't technically be allowed because it was the duo's twist. Um, because, like, Jordan never wanted to play Big Brother again. She only did so because Jeff wanted to. Okay, that was kind of bad. Yeah, Jesse being on health here. Uh, fuck, House of Villains is pretty funny. Um... But yeah, like I mentioned before that, like he does feel right when like, again, like the, the person you want for House of Villains is like someone that can take themselves, like not take themselves super seriously and that like can play into like the campy nature of the show, which like, uh, I feel like someone like Jesse is like perfect for that. Same thing with like Hatch, um, I think like makes a lot of sense as well. And Wes obviously makes a lot of sense as well. But that's why I think, like, Boss from Rob wouldn't make sense. Even Russell, I don't think, really makes sense either. I think Russell's, like, a bit too serious. Um, but straight up, like, I don't even know who... Like, who's the next Survivor person? Maybe, like, Coach? Coach could fit. Um, Tyson would be great, right? House of Villains? I think those are the sort of people you would want. Not like the people that are like pretty serious. <laughs> Say, oh yeah, Sandra, obviously, yeah. Uh, like Tony, I think would be like maybe. I'm not sure if Tony fits the show or not. Like Parvati wouldn't fit the show, I don't think. Yeah, like, I think you need, like, a specific type of villain. Uh, but yeah, Biggest Party's back. What a shocker. B5 is half and half. Uh, yeah, like, if they were to bring back eight people from one through four, like, it would probably be, like... I think the question is, like, can you get enough people to say yes? Yeah, I think it's the bigger question. I think there's enough good people. I just think, like, the people they would want wouldn't say yes. Like, Hardy and Nicole would both say no. And I think they would want them. Um, but yeah, and like same thing like Jason. Like I don't know if Jason would have said yes. But yeah, like likely returnees at that point. Like what? Like Will? Again, Nicole Hardy if they wanted it. Again, Bunky and Monica would have been consideration. Um, Boogie would be consideration. I want this done. Probably it for that cast. BB3, again, Lisa would be in consideration. Daniel would be a lock. Um, Hammy villains, yeah. Like, that's the kind. Uh, I imagine they call Franzel in House of Villains. I, I, uh, obviously, it wouldn't work, but that would be funny if, if she was on House of Villains. need to go and see Antonio if I have any hope of salvaging this mess I've made. Okay. Shit, I'm debating do I end here or not. Because, like, technically, I'm, like, about 30-ish minutes, maybe if not even more, behind my previous playthrough. But I also, straight up, kind of want to end stream as quick as possible. Uh, while still doing the stuff I want to do. Like, so I, I still want to do the daily run. Uh... But I, I don't want to be up until, like, 4 a.m., ideally, 
And if not, then like at the latest 4 a.m. Um, so like I'm thinking maybe this is just where we call it. And the thing with this game too, like with Ezio Collection, is that I could just switch games midstream anyway, and it's like whatever. So, yeah, I think I think we'll probably just end this here. Paul Jackson, imagine Paul Jackson, that'd be funny. Ica would be great for House of Villains. Like, I don't know if they would go BB Can that sort of thing, but Ica would be great. Um. Even like Koozie, but is Koozie a villain? I think it's the like bigger thing. But I think Koozie's someone that could definitely ham it up for the show. Uh, do you like Spicy V will have any say on Anthony's decisions? No. But I think she will have some individual decisions from him. Like, I don't think she's going to be able to influence Anthony. I think that's like kind of a trope of Anthony, is that he's very hard to influence. Um, but I think she is going to have her own, like, going to, like, she's going to have a mind of her own, though. Um, like, I don't think she's just going to blindly follow Anthony. Um, that's on Ghost earlier. Must have been Fran Franzel, obviously. Um, yeah, like, the only time I, I think he's been, like, convinced of something is, is Dane. Uh, at the final five. And even that was like something that I think he wanted to believe in anyway. Um, but he's like, at the end of the day, like Anthony is a very loyal player to his people. And like Dane was his person from the very beginning. And then he was hurt by Dane going against him for uh, to take out Corey. So that loss, uh, that made them lose trust in each other. But then like, I think he wanted to still trust in Dane. Uh, do you think Vic's biggest asset will be her control of the women group? Yeah, 100%. Um, the question is, like, how much is how much is Anthony able to, uh, one, find his way within that, but then also dismantle it um, along the way? But, yeah, okay. Um, I think we're going to switch games. Again, the stream will probably cut out for, uh, I don't know, like, 15 seconds or so maybe 30 i don't know i i was able to close the game boot up part two and then we'll be back so yeah again i'll be back in a second